this game um, and the season going forward, they've got to make this place a little bit of a fortress and they've got to pick up points at home, but it's going to be very, very difficult for them today. Uh, a pensive Juan Marleo on the bench. Takes a seat to his right today, usually occupied by Pep Guardiola. We wish him well and good afternoon to you, Pep, if you're listening. Uh, to us on BBC Radio Manchester this afternoon. We are underway then. Manchester City from left to right in the first half. Sheffield United from right to left. Greasy chip butty ringing off the cock to our right-hand side. Packed and everybody on their feet in that feature stand of Bramall Lane. Couple of long balls from kick-off as City hooking up midway inside the Sheffield United half. It is then flicked round the corner for Will Asula. One of the Summer signings of Sheffield United and Paul Heckingbottom the day and he spent last season at Derby County. He was a sub in 13 of 16 games for Derby County last season. And here he is starting in the Premier League against the reigning champions. Edison on the ball, he's in uh, a chalky green outfit this afternoon. Slightly darker tones on Wes Fodderingham, the... Sheffield United goalkeeper who conceded three to Rian Mahrez in April in that FA Cup semi-final. Vardiol tries to stretch forward, loses the ball, but it runs away to Jack Grealish out on the left-hand side. He just rotates it back through to Vardiol. And across the back line for, for Nathan Ake. And if we look at the early, they may change in a minute without a position or whatever, but it looks Vardiol is left back. Ake is the left-sided centre. Yeah, certainly lined up like that to start with. Um, yeah, that caught us all off guard a little bit. Um, so yeah, well, interesting to see how it does out there. Here is Vardiol on the ball again. Quiet couple of games to start his Manchester City career with. Came off the bench for his debut against Burnley. Already 3 0 up at the time. And quiet last week against Newcastle United. Yeah, we're already just 90 seconds into the game, and I think this is how it's going to be. Mike Sheffield United are sitting in the lower block, and you know, there's not one player, only Edison in the city half. And I think this is going to be the story of, of the first half. And they're going to try and keep it tight, aren't they, Sheffield United? Play two minutes, 0 0. No real test yet for Fodderingham. As Nicky said, the way that Sheffield United are sitting in, no test for Edison. It'll be interesting to see how long till he gets the first test. Don't expect, perhaps though, a goal fest between these two sides. Only 11 goals in their last 10 games as a pairing. And of those 11 goals, Sheffield United have scored just one. Brian Dean all the way back in April 1993. Interested on that, we did the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley together and, and Sheffield United did have a couple of chances early on and the game could have been different if they'd have taken those. Very good point, they did. Not so much today on their home territory. Here is Grealish, 10 yards to the byline, getting the booze, not sure why. And he stumbles as he turns back out to the far side, trips on the ball and he's conceded a goal kick for Wes Fodderingham. Jack Grealish getting regular starts now for Manchester City out on that left-hand side, getting that partnership with Erling Haaland in the middle. Perhaps not his fluid best just then. No, he sort of stumbled over the ball, much to the delight of the cop at Sheffield United, that giving him a little bit of stick. But he's a kind of player, I think, that thrives off, um, off a bit of stick. So Sheffield United fans ought to be uh, a bit careful goading him. Sheffield United never beaten Manchester City in the Premier League during uh, three times out of ten matches. As uh, it's header forward from Asula, will be chased down but unsuccessfully by Gustavo Hamer. Scored a great goal against Nottingham Forest last week, but uh, Sheffield United still lost that one 2-1 uh, at the, uh, the City ground. Here's Ruben Diaz to the right-hand side of defence. Kyle Walker, the captain, scored the winner between the pair in, the, in, in Bramall Lane in October 2020 in their last meeting here. Long-range strike from him, drilled into the bottom corner on his 100th Premier League appearance for the club. There might have been some that feared he wouldn't have many more to make in the summer in a Manchester City shirt, but that has changed a little bit. No official confirmation yet, but uh, it does look increasingly likely that he's going to stay at Manchester City this season. Throwing down the near side for Sheffield United. Asula will try and control. He flicks it infield for Traore. Bardiol, he's there to help Manchester City out. Grealish and Ruben Diaz. Yeah, much of the same. City, Sheffield had a little spell there, but City looked like they're going to, you know, control possession as you expect them to do. Um, it was interesting then when Edison got the ball on the edge of his box. They were quite high, Sheffield United. I just wondered if, um, as we've seen before, when Haaland starts to make these runs in behind, uh, he tried to go out to Walker and just overhit it. But it'll be interesting to see that uh, how that progresses through the first half. Two men keeping a close eye on uh, Erling Haaland in uh, John Egan and 
Jack Robinson this afternoon. Alvarez tries to turn 25 yards out. Holland then comes to look seemingly from an offside position, but for now the flag stays down and play continues. Kyle Walker just outside the right corner of the penalty area near side as we look at it. Rodri into Kovacic, has a little flick to the right-hand side, loses the ball. And Sheffield United on their charge up towards the halfway line, lose out themselves. Now Bernardo Silva into the penalty area on the right-hand side, just outside the six-yard box. He's got plenty of men around him, tries to drill a low ball in. Bounces away out towards the touchline. Kyle Walker's turned now to whip one in. And that is uh, picked up on this occasion. Sheffield United's defence and sent long and away. Nathan Ake will have that inside his own half. Nicky Weaver. Yeah, terrific uh, skill there from Bernardo Silva, what we expect of him. He chopped, he chopped about four defenders up with one trick then. Um, fortunately, he couldn't quite get his cross into the danger area. But yeah, uh, promising signs for City. Stands just outside the centre circle, inside the Sheffield United half. Bernardo Silva at the minute. Here's uh, Ruben Diaz. On the Portuguese contingent of Manchester City and the rumours of Matias Nunez might only add to that as well. Here is uh, Jack Grealish on the left-hand touchline, far side. Comes in field two, three yards or so and lays it back. Here's Vardiol. Not adventuring too far forward. That looks like it might be Kyle Walker's job of the two full-backs this afternoon to stretch the Sheffield United defence. Vardiol again, ten yards inside the uh, Blades half. No real cut through yet for Manchester City against the Blades. It's almost as if you, you want Sheffield United to have the ball a little bit further up the pitch just to, you know, maybe try and hit them on the, a little bit of a counter attack because if you look at them now, they, they're pretty flat five across the back there and it's going to be pretty difficult to get down the sides and, and in between. So, yeah, it's almost you need to Sheffield United to get more advanced to, to maybe create some space. Paul Hacking bottom enthusiastically walked out to the edge of his technical area almost on the pitch then, but he's uh, slowly walking backwards after. Issuing some instructions to his players. No sign of one more Leo yet from his seat in the dugout. He remains sat down and comfortable for now. Did look pensive and a little bit nervous perhaps uh, before kick-off. We've played six minutes, nil-nil. Bernardo Silva looks to attack the Sheffield United penalty area yet again. Now he bends one in left-footed. Haaland's got a flick up on the head that goes over the bar. Had to be crafty, had to be invented. Just didn't quite come off, nil-nil. Yeah, again, good ball in from Bernardo, whipped in for, with his left foot from the right-hand side and, um, yeah, it's a good run from uh, Haaland, but he just got a bit too much perch on the ball. He needed to just, just sort of skim his head there to maybe loop over Fotheringham. Very windy, Mark, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's, blowing, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Little, not if we're in a wind tunnel, but, yeah, two of the players' shirts are rattling around a bit. Which is surprising, because it's a, an enclosed arena. Um, usually in the open stands and where the corners aren't filled in it does get a little bit worse but you can see the shadows from the flags on the Tony Curry stand where we are there down on the pitch and you can see them flapping away long goal kick by Fodderingham the header forward from Jack Grealish on the halfway line Harland is going to put uh, Egan under a little bit of pressure he dealt with it well and Fodderingham was on the edge of his penalty area uh, ready to collect the ball and relieve that pressure Pretty much every time Father Gum's had it, he's gone long, so I don't think they'll be looking to play out short at all. <laughs> um, and it's sort of difficult because they probably haven't got the players, you know, to play out like City have. But every time they've gone long, they've pretty much lost the ball. So uh, from Sheffield United's point of view, they've got to try and retain possession for a little bit longer um, than they have. It could be a, a long afternoon for the Blades. They've started with two defeats from two at home to Crystal Palace, then away to Nottingham Forest on their return back to the... Premier League, there has been an early goal at Turf Moor, Burnley nil, Aston Villa 1, another 2 o'clock kickoff. Aston Villa in European action in the week, trying to qualify for the uh, Europa League. Matty Cash has got the goal in that game for anyone who maybe has an eye on their fantasy team. We've had a poor start this weekend to my fantasy side could be improved this afternoon maybe here's Rodri coming forward midway inside the Sheffield United half the challenge comes in and then all of a sudden City are a little stretched here but Sheffield United have got to make the right decisions as uh, Hamer was venturing forward the pass through was pretty poor and uh, Ruben Diaz Edison and Ake between them have managed to pick it off and City come forward again yeah, probably the best situation Sheffield United have been in. Um, Rodri got dispossessed. It, it was a bit of a three-on-three. Three. Uh, ball got played through, but uh, Diaz was the right side of the attacker and uh, eased it back to Edison. And, and yeah, that's the uh, best situation Sheffield United's had. It's amazing the, the lift the crowd got just by yeah. having a little bit of possession over the halfway line. Yeah, they 
Sheffield United. I remember Sheffield United came to the Etihad Stadium and sat in for 60, 70 minutes a couple of years ago and then really went for it at the end, nearly nicked something. City did win 1-0 that day and the Blade fans are going to have to help their team perhaps when they need it most. Here's Kovacic in from the left-hand side. Rodri in close proximity takes over the possession of the ball. That out to the far side touchline for Jack Grealish to have a run at George Bulldog. He's the one change for Paul Heckingbottom in the Sheffield United side today. Rodri kills it in, back post, looking for Walker, but it's headed away on this occasion by Ben Osborne, the other wing back, diving header out of the box as the cross came in this time early from Ruben Diaz. Kovacic just flicks it back into the centre circle under a little bit of pressure from uh, Traore. Yeah, so far they've defended the wide balls in very well. Sheffield United, they've been, uh, there's only Haaland who had that flick header that went over. Um, so yeah, City have put some decent balls in, but um, Sheffield United have defended them well so far. Erling Haaland looking to become the quickest player to 40 goals in the Premier League. He's on 37, 38 rather, in 37 games so far. Alan Shearer and Andy Cole got to 40 in 45 games. Oh, I Kevin imagine he'll comfortably beat uh, that record. You would expect it, so. He comfortably beats most records, to be fair, <laughs> doesn't he? Well, the record that could go today, Pep Guardiola, if I know he's technically not here, but he's still the manager in Manchester City. It'll be his 200th game in the Premier League to win. He'll do it in 55 fewer than... As the header comes in from Haaland, he's the one for foddering him to save. He'll do it in 55 fewer games, Pep Guardiola, than Sir Alex Ferguson managed. He's taken Pep just 269 games to get that uh, 200 win. If it happens today at the moment, though, after 11 minutes, Sheffield United nil, Manchester City nil. It was a weak header in the box from Erling Haaland, who had space, really put the neck muscles behind it, but just didn't generate anything from it. Yeah, it was a good ball in from Alvarez. Um, it was just a little bit behind him, I think. Um, and he was probably, you know, 10, 11 yards out, slightly back stretching, and, you know, he got it on target, but uh, it didn't uh, trouble West London at all. Sheffield United tried to come down the right-hand side with Traore, just slipped and ran out of room at the same time. Ball went over the byline, City goal kick away to our left-hand side. The City fans behind Edison at the minute on the lower tier of the stand to our left-hand side. Here's Grealish on the left for Manchester City, far side. Squaring up once again against Bulldog, drifts the ball infield, uses Rodri. Now Kovacic, dodgy touch, but somehow has managed to... Take a deflection, Haaland uses his strength and Manchester City have the first corner of the game out on the left-hand side. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they try and work sometimes, if you're going to work on a particular corner routine, you'll do it on the, if you're going to do anything fancy, you'll do it on the first one. Um, but yeah, like I said, they've put some good balls in so far, so Sheffield United have uh, defended them well so far and they're going to have to be on their toes here as well. Everybody inside the penalty area for Sheffield United in those red and white shirts, corner on the far side then to City, who've got Six or seven shirts in there. Harlem runs to the near post, tries to flick it on. Ake, Diaz in the six-yard box. Had his back to goal, was challenged, and Sheffield United clear it away. It was a crafty corner, and it very nearly came off, but it's still alive here with Walker feeding through Rodri, whose first time cross from the right of the penalty area. Sails behind. Goal kick Sheffield United. A really disappointing cross from Rodri there. He got in a really good position. Um, you wanted to sort of whip his foot round it but he sort of put it straight over the crossbar but it was a good corner in um you know obviously they worked on that near post one it looked like Haaland had a swing at it um i think it was um Ake may have got a touch and uh, yeah Sheffield United defended it well but um a, a half chance for City now they want to use the pace to try right down the left this time Diaz across to cover and referee says goal kick Sheffield United and their fans certainly felt they were also going to get a corner but uh not the way that the referee here this afternoon is Jared Gillett. Not the way that he saw it. So we played 14 minutes. Sheffield United nil. Manchester City nil. Certainly got a bit of pace up there, Mark, haven't they? Um, you know, they're going to miss Njai this year. Rudy Salter Marseille was terrific for them last year, but they've certainly got a bit of pace up there with a, a Sula and Traore. So, you know, and we've seen over recent seasons that City can be, you know, susceptible, susceptible to the counter-attack when opposition have got pace. Um, so that's what Sheffield United are going to have to try and feed on today. Traore there. 12 goals in 14 games this season. Uh, the When he was playing for Hacken in, in, uh, in Sweden, uh, their season starts a little bit earlier due to not being able to play over the winter time with the cold temperatures. So, uh, yeah, impressive start to this season. The City try and feed one in round the back. Good sliding challenge from 
John Egan, otherwise Hurling Harlem was in and clearing the penalty area, but a uh, little warning there for Sheffield United as Vardiol, nice little turn, not sure whether he meant it too much, but now he's on a run down the left-hand side, we'll send it to his right-hand side for Walker from distance, his shot takes two, three deflections and Fodderingham scoops it up in the box. I think you can see there, I think it was Guardiola who played, uh, nearly got Harlan through and a couple of touches there. I think you can see why he's playing on the outside and Aki's one in because he's probably a little bit better on the ball than Aki. Aki's obviously a brilliant, brilliant defender. Um, but going forward, it looks really promising for Guardiola there. He slipped a great ball down the side. Um, I think it was John Egan. Uh, who just got uh, a challenge in, else Haaland would have been free. But it's typical Haaland, he's sort of 45, 50 yards out from goal and he's always on the shoulder, always looking to run in behind. Um, so yeah, Sheffield United have got to be very uh, careful, uh, not, not, not being too high when they've got possession of the ball. So nil nil, bit of treatment here to uh, Ben Osborne, who's uh, gone down in the Sheffield United penalty area. Physios are on, Paul Heckingbottom's got half his squad around him. Still no sign of Juan Mar Leo. Uh, there's a couple of uh, people just resting an iPad on top of uh, the dugout. I wonder if Pep Guardiola is uh, is on the other end of that iPad feeding, maybe, some instructions. Maybe he's happy with what he's seen so far, but as Paul Heckingbottom has to readjust things, maybe given the start Sheffield United have had, nil-nil, yes, but under a lot of pressure. City, actually, it's just more of the same. They don't need to change anything. Yeah, interesting you said that, Paul Heckingbottom, a former teammate of mine at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, he keeps that quiet these days, but yeah, he's, he's got his players together. But yeah, I think he'll be reasonably happy. I think City will be reasonably happy. They've had, you know, the lion's share of possession, which you would expect. Um, not had an absolute clear-cut chance yet, but they've had a few situations, and you know, from Sheffield United's point of view, it's just how long they can keep in the game like this. Uh, once you go one, one behind the City, it, it's, it's going to be very difficult. But I think, you know, so far, um, like opening third of the first half, if you like, they'll, both teams will be reasonably um, reasonably happy. But it looks like Sheffield United are making a change here. Well, I think, yeah, the afternoon is over for Osborne. It was... Uh... Started all three of Sheffield United's games in the Premier League so far, but his afternoon ends after 17 minutes. In his place comes on Yasser Larucci. I think he's had quite a good start, to be fair, Osborne. He's made some nice clearances, got a couple of challenges in, so, um, yeah, he'll be, he'll be very disappointed to go off. Larucci, the uh, loan signing from one of the CFG sister clubs, Troyes in France. He's a former Liverpool player as well. From their uh, academy. Fodderingham once again takes the goal kick long following Osborne's treatment and it's uh, bumbled around a little bit inside the city half Rodri again the insured touch and now Walker tries to skip past Larucci who has a little nibble at him referee didn't feel there was anything in that towards City the free kick Walker then recovers the ball and plays it back to his own penalty area he would have liked to have headed towards the Sheffield United penalty area I think uh, showing he's still got pace Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, he loves sprinting. He's, he's one of the fastest players we've, you know, Premier League's probably ever seen. Um, it's a big game for him as well against his former club. He's, he's a boy of Sheffield United fan. I think he's made no secret that he'd perhaps want to finish his career here. But, you know, there was talk of him going and at one point it looked like he might be going. So, um, like I said, I don't think anything's official yet, but I think it's good news that, uh, that he's staying. I think he's got, you know, another couple of good years left in him. 33, Kyle Walker celebrated that a couple of weeks ago. Born and raised in these parts and great Premier League career. Kovacic is on a stormy run down the middle here and wins a free kick for his troubles as well as he's fouled. Picked the ball up on the halfway line to the left of the centre circle, just kept running and running and running and Sheffield United, the only way to stop him was to cut him down, pull him down and one nibble, two nibbles at his feet. Traore doing his best. Kovacic held him off till it was just a little bit too much and free kick to City. Yeah, it was a great run from him. He's, he's a good ball carrier. Um, I think we touched on it before and, and uh, a bit of a uh, unspectacular signing if you like, but it'll be someone who does a very, very good job. Uh, obviously they lost Gundogan, so I think it's a good signing. Premier League experience. Um, and yeah, he did fantastic there. And like I said, Sheffield United had no choice really um, to bring him down. I think he's a little bit far out for the shot, probably Best part of 40 yards out, 35 plus, um, but very dangerous situation. Alvarez and Bernardo Silva are the ones having a look at it. Alvarez skips over the ball, Bernardo clips it in, header is there for Rodri, Ake, 1-0! He's offside, the flag goes up. And Rodri won the header, that went vertically in the air, Ake was first to react, he puts it in the bottom right-hand corner. 
but the flag was up instantly from the linesman on this near side. Yeah, the goalkeeper, if you watch the replay, the goalkeeper slips massively as the ball comes in from Silva. Uh, yeah, he is offside. Um, and it's Rodri who heads it up in the air. The goalkeeper looks like he's going to come for it and slips. And then that allowed Ake in. So uh, he's got away with one there a little bit, Wedford. But it was the um, it was the quick decision. It was just a, a shoulder offside, if you like. Yeah, it was Rodri on the initial run through from Bernardo Silva. Ake would have been onside. But uh, the AR is, is checking this. And I think it is a quick decision as well, given the fact that the referee has said to Wes Hodderingham, let's play on. Rodri's offside confirmed on the big screen as well. So Sheffield United nil. Manchester City nil after 20 minutes here at Bramall Lane. Alvarez won the ball back, but then lost it on the edge of the Sheffield United penalty area. City harassing Sheffield United as soon as they get on the ball. The press is quick, the press is high, and City have it with Ruben Diaz. And that's the first time that West Fotheringham's tried to play out from a goal kick, and City have pressed the life out of them and won the ball back in a really dangerous area. So, it's, you know, I think Sheffield United don't just think they're going long. <laughs> yeah, they won't be doing that again, will they? Nil nil. Here is uh, Alvarez on the left, supporting Jack Grealish for now. Rodri. Diaz midway inside the Sheffield United half. Had a look into the box. Goes right to Bernardo Silva instead. Now walk a little sidestep to take the ball past LaRucci. It's a deep cross to the back post. Jack Grealish will go chasing all the way out towards the far side and try and keep it in. He does on the half volley. Send it back to the halfway line, but he must have run out of time, run out of room. It's going to be a Sheffield United throw in on the far side there, right. Level with the corner of the penalty area. Another goal at Turf Moor, another goal for Matty Cash, another goal for Aston Villa. So Burnley nil, Aston Villa two. Burnley playing their first game since losing to Manchester City on the opening day. They were due to play Luton last week, but Kenilworth Road not ready yet. Uh, means that... Uh, Burnley have had to wait a little while. Newcastle, Liverpool later, big game at St James's Park as well, I'm sure. City on their way back from uh, Bramall Lane. We'll, we'll have an eye on that. Pass back from Sheffield United, a bit risky. No one from a blue shirt of Manchester City able to do too much with the ball. Harlan pressed Fodring and the goalkeeper who was on the chase inside his own penalty area. Here is Rodri, right to the centre circle. Bernardo Silva, nil-nil. Nathan Ake now inside the Manchester City half. He just jogs into the centre circle. There's been a lot of this game where City are allowed to slow the ball right down, walking pace almost, because particularly in these parts on the halfway line, there's just no pressure from Sheffield United. Yeah, I think Sheffield United are quite happy for City to have the ball in and around the, the halfway line. Um, there's no point in going pressing because they'll get picked off. So, yeah. Um, it's pretty much the story of the first half. You know, Sheffield United have just got to try and be a little bit tidier in possession. Um, you know, they, they're working the socks off to try and win the ball back, and then when, when they win the ball back, they, they turn it straight over again. So it's, it's been a difficult half, Sheffield United, but they'll be delighted midway through the first half. Um, you know, but you just feel that City are going to start turning the screw soon. It remains goalless. Here's Ruben Diaz, right hand side of the field, the near side for Manchester City as we look at it from our position at the back of the Tony Curry stand here on BBC Radio Manchester and anywhere in the UK on BBC Sounds. So if you're heading out and about, you can take us with you this afternoon and listen to the game wherever you're going in the UK. Here's Ruben Diaz on the right-hand side. Harlan let it run past him and the ball never got to Bernardo Silva too far in front of him. Cleared away by Sheffield United. It's another Manchester City throw quite strange isn't it without Pep being there sort of gesticulating and you know making every tackle and winning every header and getting he's really animated on the line so it's quite unusual for you know is a, is a, a lonesome man there Paul Eckenbottom he is he looks to his left I don't think you'll have seen one Marleo yet this afternoon next to him on the edge of the technical area but as we've said perhaps no need either here's Diaz towards Vardial out on the left hand side in in the sunshine here in South Yorkshire, a little strip that almost draws level with the edge of the penalty areas, the bit of shade that we have on this near side. Walker on the right in the shade, heads towards the corner of the Blades penalty area. Back he goes to Diaz, it's a right-footed pass to Bernardo Silva. Just outside the 18-yard box, he runs to towards the byline, cuts it back once again. It's Kyle Walker, Rodri, Kovacic just slips into a little gap in the middle. Nowhere to play it forward, though. Has to go back to the right-hand side, and City will 
Now try and stretch Sheffield United as they move to the left with Vardiol into Alvarez. Nice little pass that from Vardiol. And Alvarez was on the same wavelength, but not for the first time in this game. An infield pass from Alvarez. He's picked off by the Blades, who themselves now want to be creative and push it forward with a little flick through, but it doesn't come off. Vinny Souza will not get a chance to run at the City defence and the blue shirts of City have it again. Really loose from Alvarez there, but on the edge of the box. But what was really impressive, he was the first one to be charging back and he ended up being in his own half winning the ball back. So that's pretty much, you know, what you've got to do if you want to play for one of, one of Pep's teams. And City looking to win three from three at the start of the season for the first time since Pep's first season in charge. All the way back in 2016. It's for a side that's won trophy after trophy in five Premier Leagues in six years. Bit of a surprising stat of perhaps how slow they've started, but they've always picked it up well. They have started well this season. Here is Kovacic into the box. The pass came from Grealish. The block comes in from Ollie Norwood. And Grealish concedes the throw on the far side, but Kovacic getting involved there. Yeah, he's, he's really sort of last 10 minutes, he's really had a bit more of an influence on the game. Um, got the ball out to Grealish there, but yeah, it's uh, it was a good effort from Grealish. Um, down the wing, flicked it back inside of Kovacic, he had a good shot and it's well blocked by Ali Norwood. You just get the impression that City are just starting to pick the pace up now, we're just starting to uh, probe that Sheffield United back line a bit more. Um, and hopefully, they'll be able to break through in, in, you know, before half-time. So nil-nil it remains, 26 minutes played. Certainly the best attacking move that Manchester City have probably had in this game. Now the little combo between Grealish and, and Alvarez, but, uh, and, and Kovacic rather. Still no breakthrough though. Here's Bernardo Silva on the halfway line. Kyle Walker matching him, stride for stride out on the right-hand touchline. Bernardo Silva then, Pirro X360 on the ball. and maybe perhaps make up his mind as to what he wanted to do but Walker's just flicked a lovely ball through the Harland who will use his body well the ball may run away to Alvarez and it's wide of the left hand post brilliant work from Erling Harland there on the right hand side used his body so well to then try and get the turn and the angle of the shot as the ball ran to Alvarez you'd probably back him to score he couldn't find the net and City have a corner on the far side yes yeah, Kyle Walker flicks the ball inside Al, um, Harlem backs into I think it's um, Robinson or Egan and yeah it ends up falling to Alvarez and it ends up being a great save from uh, West Fotheringham the best chance of the game so far and the corner near post is dealt with by Sheffield United but City have it again here is Alvarez he puts the cross in left footed to the edge of the six yard box this time and he's Robinson to help it away City have a throw in just hanging on here a little bit Sheffield United you can see City t starting to put more pressure on um, you know, putting balls into the box, getting good situations around the edge of the box. Um, it's just a matter of time, you know, in my opinion. It's when and not if. Absolutely, and certainly Haaland gave them a big scare then. Just the strength, isn't it, in the box. Sheer, sheer strength. The Sheffield fact, United defenders are not, are not, you know, no, they weak or on they're weak. Yeah, and uh, he just brushed them off, really, didn't he? As we know, he's superhuman, isn't he? So he's, he's faster than everyone else, stronger than everyone else. and. Uh, yeah, he did really well there. Really good forward play. It's still nil-nil, though. That's the voice of Nicky Weaver, the former Manchester City goalkeeper with us on BBC Radio Manchester this afternoon. Rodri's found some space, edge of the D. He can hit them from there. This one, he rolls to the right-hand side of the box of Walker. It's a low one in right across goal. And behind Grealish, Nor Haaland could get there. And it's going to be a Manchester City corner, despite the appeals and the protests from the cop. Yeah, it's a great ball in from Walker. Uh, whips it in with his right foot. Um, he put it in the corridor in between the goalkeepers and the defender and Haaland's there just he went to the near post the ball went to the back post Grealish comes in the back post but it's well defended in the end it's another City corner this time Alvarez raises two hands in the air out on the far side the left he sends this one in in swinging delivery that then is dealt with by Egan headed out it's a Manchester City throw must be 15 minutes since Edison touched the ball yeah, it's been that one-sided he, he could have I think right. I could have played this opening uh, <laughs> half an hour or so. Yeah, he could have read the Sunday papers and all the supplements that come with it as well, I think, Edison, for the lack of action that he's had in this game. Yet to be tested, 29 minutes in, nil-nil. West Fodderingham really hasn't been overly tested himself. The defence most certainly has of the Blades. A City look to go through them. Like a blade through hot butter, maybe. Lovely flick over the top from Bernardo Silva. Diaz. Walker on the right-hand side. Diaz was in the penalty area, pulled the ball back out for 
Kyle Walker now, Bernardo Silva tries to worm his way past Vinny Souza. He, he's pulled down, it's another one of those where the only way to stop them is to foul them. And Manchester City have a free kick, what, 25 yards out, right-hand side of the penalty area. Yeah, great play from Madabi. He's great to watch, isn't he? The sort of way he pirouettes and twists and turns. Um, I bet he's good on the dance floor on a Saturday night. Um, but yeah, the only way to stop him at the minute is to uh, is to bring him down. It's a really dangerous one. Better than me on the dance floor last night at the uh, wedding I attended anyway, most certainly. If only I had the moves like Bernardo Silva. Nil, nil, but can City break through here? Alvarez and Bernardo Silva. Kyle Walker, I think, just had a quick word in the ear of Alvarez as he's jogged past him. So it's either the left foot of Bernardo or the right of Julian Alvarez. It is a three-man Sheffield United wall. One very tall player in uh, Asula. The rest are a little bit short in stature. It is the right of Alvarez that bent in, but over the bar. He went for goal. I think Fodderingham probably had it covered. Sheffield United nil, Manchester City nil. Yeah, never really enough conviction in the strike. Um, perhaps Bernardo would have been better off whipping it in, but he's maybe seen a gap on the near post and tried to whip it round the wall. Chef United again tried to play out and nearly got caught. But they have worked it to the halfway line and can't play it. They rushed that. They were looking for a Sula down the middle. Triore involved there. But Nathan Ake read it all the way and, and stopped it before it got to a Sula. Almost as if they got excited that they were going forward. The fans certainly did. Um, We'll just see what happens with Grealish here down the left-hand side. Oh, just outside the corner of the penalty area, plays it back to Vardiol, Vardiol to Ruben Diaz, and City now move it from the far side, the left to the near side, the right, with Bernardo Silva again spinning and dancing on the ball. But that time, better work from uh, Gustavo Hamer, back doing his defensive duties, and he made it work on this occasion, City send the long ball to the right-hand side, Larucci clears it out for a throw-in, and two Manchester City level with the penalty area. Yeah, the, the Sheffield United fans are getting behind Sheffield United here, um, they're holding on well, um, sort of 10 minutes ago it looked like City were going to start really, really putting the pressure on, and they have done to be fair, but they only had one clear-cut chance from that was Alvarez, and it was well saved by Wes Fotheringham. Here is uh, Kovacic, who himself has had half an opportunity, Rodri, to Alvarez, who looks to set off again this time. It's a left-footed cross into the penalty area that doesn't get near Harlan nor Bernardo. Walker knows exactly where Bernardo is. It's a no-look flick over the top pass, but he still finds his teammate, Kyle Walker, then accusations of handball against Bernardo Silva. Ball runs over the byline anyway. Sheffield United goal kick. They did have that little moment a, a couple of minutes ago. Nicky Weaver, Sheffield United trying to get through, but as I say, they, they seem to rush it, and Nathan Ake read it easily enough. Yeah, the, the, he did Ake, he, like I say, he rushed it a little bit, he could certainly sense the excitement from the fans, and I think the players got a little bit excited as well. Um, but you know, he, how long can Sheffield United sort of keep defending like they're defending? It is his last ditch defending at the, sort of the last 15 or 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, if they can get to half time at 0-0, they'll, they'll, they'll have swam the channel. M mentally, how exhausting is it? But that's the, when you see games like this, it's generally you see teams holding on, holding on, and then the top teams always get goals late on because it's so difficult. Um, you know, it's difficult when you've not got the ball, you've got to concentrate. Every single player that City have got can create something out of nothing. Um, you've got to ride your look at times, you've got to hope your goalkeeper helps you out. Um, so, yeah, Sheffield United are doing terrific so far, but they've got a long way to go. Here they come down the right hand side. Hamer plays the ball out towards Baldock, who'd gone on the charge. City have dealt with that and here's Bernardo Silva just outside his own penalty area uh, caught in possession and Edison has a touch because the challenge came in from Hamer on a Bernardo bit, Silva a little bit casual there from Bernardo Silva in his own box um, and yeah nearly gives the Sheffield United a, a chance so yeah they've got to, they've got to just not be too um, too comfortable City it's, it's nil nil um, they, they obviously got a big foothold in the game and they're dominating the play but they don't want to do anything silly it was unnecessary from Bernardo Silva that as well he had time he had space he had teammates he had options and somehow let Hamer in and Edison had to react quickly and pick the loose ball up which he did he'd probably be thankful for the touch 34 minutes played nil nil but it is the cop that you can hear Sheffield United have a little something about them at the minute now with uh, City trying to quiet them down Alvarez 
half volley flick across the penalty area looking for Erling Haaland here is Grealish to react against Baldock sends it through Alvarez the angle will be tight he'll want to pull it back huge appeals of handball yeah, penalty. It, penalty to Manchester City given by Jared Gillett the referee there's City with Alvarez tight to the byline trying to pull it back for Erling Haaland the sliding defender in trouble and penalty given an advantage now maybe turning to Manchester City John Egan the captain his left arm was out yeah there's, there's nothing intentional there but his arm's out and it's going to be a penalty it certainly won't get overturned uh, there's nothing he can do about it but his hand he knows as well you can see him bashing the ground it, you know it's when, when he goes to make the slide it, it's just a natural position although it's unnatural away from his body and uh, very unlucky for Sheffield United but they have been sort of riding the look the last uh, you know uh, 15 or 20 minutes so yeah it's going to be early in Haaland against West Fobringham one of their longest serving players, John Egan, the 30-year-old Irishman. Played with them the last time they were in the Premier League as well. But it will be Erling Haaland from the spot to help, hopefully, give Manchester City the lead. Fodderingham palms the crossbar, bouncing on his goal line. The referee with a little delay here as he checks the penalty here and tells the players, no encroachment, the cop. The fans of Sheffield United behind the goal to our right-hand side all stand up, all waving their arms, trying to distract the big Norwegian of Erling Haaland who takes four, five, six, seven strides back to the edge of the penalty area. It is Erling Haaland, he's hit the post! Haaland hits the post! And Manchester City missed the penalty! The follow-up flies out to the far side! Norwegian misses from 12 yards and still City can't find a way past Sheffield United he smacks the right hand post Erling Haaland left footed Fodderingham was on his line and maybe those Sheffield United fans did put Erling Haaland off Fodderingham died the wrong way that wouldn't have mattered but the woodwork was there and it denies Erling Haaland yeah he sent Fodderingham the wrong way so he had all the goal to aim at but he's just slightly pulled it from his aim spot he's hit the inside of the post and gone out and it, it's, as you can hear it's give the fans a big lift here at Bramall Lane well that was City's chance to quiet them down they were already starting to get vocal with their side holding out against City 37 minutes played Sheffield United nil Manchester City nil but that has just turned the volume up that little bit extra now yeah you'd have put your mortgage on early Ireland scoring there especially when he sent Fotheringham the wrong way but he slightly pulled it didn't seem the greatest strike and it you know he struck the inside of the right hand post and uh, luckily for Sheffield United and unluckily for City it stayed out well, still we are goalless eight minutes to half time on BBC Radio Manchester and anywhere in the UK on BBC Sounds will that now anger City and push them harder and better faster stronger quicker to break Sheffield United down here's Kovacic on the left hand side right on the halfway line Hamer squares up against him Rodri infield Jack Grealish has made a run but Rodri hasn't used that as an option Alvarez back towards the Sheffield United penalty area so goes into his own half uses Nathan Ake Diaz on the right of the centre circle rolls the ball across it and uses Joshko Vardiol here is uh, Grealish again a little bit deeper than perhaps he would like to uh, be Kovacic can't feed the ball through to Erling Haaland and Sheffield United a little bit of clever play clever footwork from Souza now it's sent forward towards the Sula on the edge of the Manchester City penalty area. Diaz doing his defensive duties. Souza, Oscar worthy perhaps the way he went down there. But, uh, referee was unmoved by it and Manchester City have to play. Yeah, you can just sense a little bit of belief inside Bramall Lane, can't you? Since the penalty missed, the, the volume's gone up. Um, you know, the fans have got quite excited and rightly so because, you know, at nearly 39 minutes that the, the ripped your arm off have been uh, have been nil-nil against City so yeah so credit to Sheffield United obviously a big miss there from City but you know United are holding on and you know like I said before if they can hold out to half time get in there get a breather Paul Leckenbottom can get some messages across and see how they do second half here's Rodri right footy pass to the right hand side of the field and near to find Bernardo Silva who gets to the corner of the penalty area he pushes it back out of the box Walker with a low bobbling ball into the penalty area but Again, the Blades have done well, defended it well, read it well, and LaRucci will try and set off down the left-hand side. He won't get very far, I don't think. Oh, Sula's got in front of his man, Ruben Diaz, because he's come from an offside position. 
Diaz had his hand up to the linesman on the far side before the flag went up. He knew. And Manchester City will have a free kick inside their own half. Yeah, he's got big presence up there from Willis Sula. I've seen him uh, play quite a bit for their youth teams over the years. He's someone with a lot of promise. Obviously, they lost Njai uh, to Marseille a few weeks ago, which is very disappointing for him. So it'll be up to people like him and Jebison and, and try, uh, try and uh, you know fill those big boots. Obviously, losing Billy Sharp as well. Um, bit of a cult favourite here. So, yeah, it's going to be difficult for Sheffield United, but you know, so far in this game, they, you know, they've done OK and they're hanging in there well. Here's Nathan Ake. We are five minutes from half-time on BBC Radio Manchester. Tweet your thoughts in at BBC RM Sport. Have your say as Haaland is challenged. He loses the ball and now uh, one over the top has seen Traore release. He's got nobody with him. Three back for City here. Bardio will be first up. Traore will dart towards the byline. Try and get a cross in just over Asula. And then it's very calm and composed from Kyle Walker to head it. Back to Edison, who makes the catch. Another bright moment for the Blades. It's a great ball out wide from, I think it was uh, Ollie Norwood, and, um, you know, Traore looks quite quite bright. He's dinked a lovely cross in there. Asula comes to the near post and uh, ends up being really good defending by Cal Walker, who chested it back to uh, to Edison, who's not had much to do with his first half. But just another reminder um, that, you know, Sheffield United can be dangerous on the break. Absolutely. And uh, they really do want to use the pace that... Traore has they have done already in this game four minutes from half time nil nil here's Rodri to Vardiol slipped as he passed that Rodri but it still came off for him here's Nathan Ake inside the centre circle inside the Sheffield United half now Kovacic Diaz Kovacic again a step to the right hand side the pressure comes to Masula Diaz on the touchline, Walker challenged on his return pass back down the line. And Manchester City have a throw, awarded by the linesman. I think some in Bramall Lane, I think myself included there, thought Sheffield United may have that one, but off Larucci last was the decision by the linesman, who's a lot closer to it than I am in, in fairness to him. As we edge closer and closer to half-time, Manchester City have missed a penalty in this game. Erling Haaland hit the right-hand post. Ake, bright orange boots, Strapped to his feet, gets to the halfway line. And uses Alvarez, City left to right in the closing stages of this first half. Grealish, Rodri, bounces up in front of him, manages to get the control, at least it's a shot. Low along the ground from 20 yards out, central position, but straight at Wes Fodringham, he makes a comfortable save. Yeah, we've seen him pull the trigger from these positions quite a few times over the last couple of seasons, didn't quite get all of it. And it ends up being straight down uh, West Fothergham's throat, which he'll be relieved about because it, it sort of opened up for him a little bit there on his favoured right foot. And he was probably only, you know, 21, 22 yards out. So disappointed effort in the end, although he hit the target. Fotheringham with the save, his first season in the Premier League. Yet to keep a clean sheet this season, but so far he is in this game. Nil nil. Two minutes out from finding out how much added time we've got under these. Uh, New rules that we're still getting used to. Ball over the top on the right-hand side for Sheffield United is released George Baldock here. There are five red and white shirts ahead of him. Most of them heading into the penalty area because they want the cross. Traore just pokes it back, sells his teammate a little short there in Souza. And Alvarez is able to get the challenge in. Yeah, still no sign of uh, Juan Marleo popping into the technical area yet. He's uh, keeping quite a low profile here today. He is. Yeah, I think he knows as soon as he steps out, the cameras will be on him. But uh, for now, as Sheffield United won a free kick for Jack Grealish's push on George Baldock, who now gets to his feet and races across to Jack Grealish to have a little bit of retaliation. City have the ball, Ake. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how long he puts up. There's only, you know, 90 seconds of normal time in this first half, and it, it has been pretty much all City. A couple of little situations from Sheffield United on the counter-attack. Obviously, the big moment in the first half uh, is the missed penalty from uh, from Haaland, which, yeah, no-one expected. Um, so, Sheffield United live to fight another day for now. Bernardo Silva just tried to bend one to Haaland on the outside of his boot. Hasn't come off. Three on three here for Sheffield United. Traore has got to get past... Ruben Diaz with the through ball, which he uh, he doesn't manage. The centre-back of Manchester City able to 
deal with that. Here is Alvarez forward as City now look to stretch Sheffield United, who are out of position here. Here's Grealish into the penalty area on the left-hand side. Needs a little bit of support. Turns out of the penalty area and back in it. Grealish on the byline. Cross comes in and then bounces into Fotheringham's hands over Bernardo. I think Haaland's appealing for a penalty, saying that he was pushed over or pulled down in the box there. Nothing given. Let's have a look at the replays, Nicky Weaver. Oh, well. Oh, yes. Well, he's There's got a chance. Hands. Yeah, he's got two hands around him. Uh, I think it's Robinson. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can understand why. I don't think there's perhaps enough in it for a penalty. He didn't sort of drag him to the down, but he did manhandle him. Um, the other fourth official is just about to uh, put up the injury time at the end of the first half here, yeah. which is going to be four minutes. So, another four minutes for City to try and get one. Four minutes starts now, and Kyle Walker starts his run down the right hand side. Infield to Bernardo Silva, whose touch. He's heavy first time, his second one is back into the feet of Walker, who now finds Haaland. Haaland on the strength turn again. Manages to work it at Kovacic. Here's Rodri, outside of the D. That's begging for Kyle Walker to hit it, but he chooses not to. Flicks it to his right, Bernardo Silva with the deep cross in. All players all tangle in the box. Haaland again with the appeals. Nothing given by the referee. Right melee inside the six-yard box. It was a lovely stood-up cross from Bernardo Silva. Sheffield United player remains down inside that six-yard box. What was your take on that, Nicky Weaver? Yeah, it was a, a ball in. I think his referee stopped it for a head injury. So I think bowled up there. Oh, it seems to be all right now. They've stopped it, look. Uh, but yeah, it seemed to be a coming together. Three or four players. Uh, ball goes out wide. It looked like Walker was going to shoot. He played it into Bernardo, who dinks one in there with his right foot. And uh, I think it's six one and a half dozen of the other, to be fair. And uh, two Sheffield United defenders and Ireland. Uh, they've both got hold of each other, I think. So it's a little bit of... It uh, probably looks a lot worse than it was, and these four players end up in a heap. I, I agree with that. Uh, Haaland certainly has a pull on uh, Egan's shirt there, doesn't he, as well as Baldock. I think Baldock goes over the top of Haaland, which is hence the injury. The referee here is just... Uh, stop play after that treatment to Baldock. He's up, he's OK. And he's uh, allowed to be back on the pitch as well pretty instantaneously we've played nearly two minutes of the four that were added on tweet is at BBC RM Sport to have your set at half time can City do to find a route past Sheffield United or is it very much more of the same WhatsApp to 08000 321 just start your message with the word Mank Vardiol's header out to the left hand side perfect time to score now for City Grealish comes in from the left still on his right foot the ball never goes too far away from that right boot but now he sees it to the right Kyle Walker, Bernardo Silva twisting and turning yet again up against uh, Jack Robinson cross comes early from Ruben Diaz won't find Haaland's header, shot comes in from Alvarez hits Egan flies over the crossbar, Manchester City have another corner this time on the near side the right there's a good ball in again. He keeps complaining to the referee, Harlan. They feel like they're sort of doubling up on him. He feel like he's getting manhandled, but, you know, he's giving as good as he's getting. Um, but another corner, um, and this will probably be the last action of the first half. Yeah, referee having a word with uh, Erling Harland and Anil Ahad Modzic, the Sheffield United right-sided defender. In the meantime, Alvarez has placed the ball down on this near side, so out-swinging delivery is what you'd expect from the right boot still the referee having some words that includes with Kyle Walker the Manchester City captain big appeals to Kyle Walker actually towards Jared Gillett protesting about something he's seen either just a moment ago or early in the game right we're ready for the corner in it goes from Alvarez at the near post it's poor it's behind again because the clearance is poor from Sheffield United but that is not a corner to write home about for Julian not at Alvarez. all there's quite a lot of pushing and shoving going on here in the box Aki's getting involved uh, the referee's coming over um Harlan's getting involved, so yeah, Aki's not happy about something, but you know, again, but it wasn't a great ball in from Alves, obviously they're trying to work something at the near post, but I think, at, you know, at this late stage, he needs just to get the ball in the mixer. Yeah, so left arm, half raised, that one is a better corner, Diaz challenges the header, but then so does Souza and Sheffield United come away from the penalty area, now Asula up towards the halfway line on the far side touchline, challenge comes in from a recovering Ruben Diaz, and it's brilliantly made, here is Grealish, we've nearly had the four minutes of added time, Grealish has fouled, yellow card as well, Manchester City will end this half with a free kick. Yeah, yellow card for Baldock. He's had a few little nibbles this afternoon, but that was one too many for the ref. Uh, again, 
You know, when Jack Grealish is, oh, it's quite a nice challenge, actually. So, yeah, deserved of, uh, of a yellow card. And, uh, yeah, another dangerous position. And this probably will be the last uh, action of the first half. So, Manchester City with this free kick. It's midway inside Sheffield United's territory. Uh, on the left-hand side. So, this one is going into the penalty area. It certainly may as well with it now going past the four minutes of added time that we were shown. Bernardo Silva, Julian Alvarez over it yet again for Manchester City. Paul Heckingbottom rests his hand on his chin, watching on. Bernardo Silva is the one to jog over the ball this time. Alvarez sends it in, the backwards header from Sheffield United has hardly cleared it. Now there's a big boot behind it uh, from Osula up towards the halfway line and that is half time and Sheffield United have probably got exactly what they wanted from that first half. A goalless draw so far. A little bit of luck with Erling Haaland missing a penalty. That will be the talking point. As you'd expect, it has been all Manchester City, all the possession. Edison has had nothing to do, but Sheffield United are keeping City at bay for now. It, at the break, it is Sheffield United now, Manchester City now. Thank you, Mike. And of course, uh, Haaland's penalty hitting the post is a talking point, which we'll uh, get to in just a moment. Before we do that, Nicky, at the halfway point, uh, probably not, not a massive shock, but people would have expected uh, City to have certainly created more chances, if not converted a few. What is it that Sheffield United are doing well enough to prevent that from happening for the Blues? Yeah, I think they're defending really well. They're defending quite deep. They've sat in in numbers. Uh, they've pretty much dealt with everything that City have had to throw at them. Uh, West Fothergrim had one great save from Alvarez. Uh, obviously, the, the main talking point of the first half is um, is the penalty miss that no one expected. Um, so it gives Sheffield United, you know, a chance, and, and they've held on well. They've defended corners well. Um, they've been first to the ball. Um, they've sort of been, you know, trying to keep Haaland as quiet as they can when the ball's in the air and in dangerous positions. Um, and, you know, Paul Eckenbottom will be absolutely d delighted um, with how Sheffield United have defended in that first. From City's point of view, uh, they've had the lion's share of possession, which we, we expected them to. Um, can they be a little bit more clinical in and around the edge of the box and a little bit more ruthless? But uh, the game's certainly gone how we thought it would do in terms of possession, but not in terms of scoreline. Um, again, we'll, we'll chat about Haaland in just a second. In terms of the way that City have, uh, have lined up, in terms of the way they've approached this, is there anything that you think maybe they should have done differently or is it just a matter of time or in, in terms of where everyone's playing and, and who? Anything you'd change there? Not particularly. I mean, it'd be interesting to see if he does make a change. I mean, Phil Foden would love to get on and get into them little pockets and could he slip balls down the sides of the centre halves and what have you. Um, you know, Kovacic has done well. Uh, Bernardo Silva's looked threatening. Um, Alvarez had, had some good situations. Um, so, yeah, listen, if, if, if Haaland converts the penalty, it's 1-0, everyone's saying the City's done sort of OK, but um, as it is, it's 0-0. Sheffield United will be absolutely delighted with that. You got the sense they were really hanging on um, towards the end, so you would imagine if, <coughs> you know, the longer it goes for Sheffield United, the more difficult it's going to get. Um, you know, will they tire towards the end? But, you know, City have just got to be maybe a little bit more creative around the edge of the box, um, be a bit more ruthless and clinical with the passes in, in, in the final third. I said, of course, that we'd mention that Haaland penalty, as Mike says, it will be one of the major talking points uh, at this point. Well, I want to share this tweet with you from a Sheffield United fan, actually, from Liz, who says, never a penalty, ludicrous, sliding on the ground. How else is a player supposed to get balanced but put their arm out? He's a yard away from it. He's not looking at the ball. There's nothing intentional about it. No, I mean, I understand the point, but I think in the, the rules are the rules, and I think it is a penalty. There's, there's nothing he could do about it at all, um, but it is a penalty, and, um, you know, the Sheffield United fans will be relieved that Erling Haaland sort of missed it, which, you know, was a big big shock for everybody. Um, but, yeah, you just feel that Sheffield United have got to keep it at nil-nil as long as they can, because once, once City get one, you know, the floodgates could open. But, you know, Paul Eckenbottom will be absolutely delighted at half-time to be nil-nil. In terms of just, just a quick one on that for, for fans watching who think it's it's harsh. And as you've said, you know, it may well be harsh, but there, you know, there again it is it is the rules. I mean we saw it last week in the World Cup final with, with Kira Walsh. It literally brushed like a couple of a, a, a fingertips. In this case, when a player is sliding and not stood up right, you know, slide along the floor with your arms behind your back is is quite difficult. I guess you could argue it's dangerous 
for head injuries maybe if you've not got that balance in hands to I mean what would you say to that not in terms of the rules but just from a you know a player's perspective really yeah. of, 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 it is an awkward way isn't it if you're going to slide with, with no arms to yeah, support you've, you you've got to sort of you know it's almost like a stabiliser isn't it it's <laughs> the same as going up for a header with you know getting your arms out and what have you but yeah very difficult he's gone into slide he's cut the ball back and his trailing arm that he's using there for stability so there's no other way of really sort of sliding it's just one of them unfortunate incidents from a Sheffield United point of view um, like I, do, I sort of do sympathise with him because there's nothing he can do he wasn't looking at the ball yeah. but the rules are the rules um, and in, 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 with the rules they are at the minute that is a penalty it's one of those that you're really annoyed if it's given against you but you're screaming for it if it's in your favour because you know it's in the rules regardless of uh, whether you, whether it's fair or not a couple more tweets Nicky one from Ben who says we are lacking in the middle we need De Bruyne back or put Foden there which again goes back to that question earlier that I was asking do you think they've set up in the right way is it just a matter of time or is it, it is that what they're missing do they need uh, Foden listen I think we'll see Foden whether it's at half time I'm not so sure it might be around the 60 minute mark but I think City there's sort of not a lot they've done wrong it's just they've got to be a little bit more clinical in around that box obviously Sheffield United are sitting in they're quite happy for City to have the ball sort of 30 and 40 yards out but when they get in around that box they've got to be a little bit more creative a bit more clinical and ruthless um, but yeah I don't think the setup's wrong I just think that at some point we're going to see Phil Foden um, I think that'll give the City fans a lift who've been pretty quiet this half um, so yeah something needs to happen they just need a little bit of injection or something and a little bit of creativity and um, but all I would say is that you know all the players that are still on the pitch can create something out of nothing for City and I do think it's only going to be a matter of time before before they break the deadlock yeah they do tend to find a way and of course as, as time goes on concentration and fatigue can set in of course there's all different factors a final tweet here uh, Nicky from Ian who says we're getting used to this now teams sitting deep hoping to catch us on the break Pep will always come up with solutions exactly and that's you know we knew Sheffield United weren't going to be expansive in the play um, they've tried to play out a couple of times nearly got caught once um, but yeah Pep will have to come up with a solution keep doing what they're doing keep prodding keep probing as you mentioned before the longer the game goes the more tired the Sheffield United you know there'll be lazy legs and lazy minds in there mistakes will happen um, and City will get chances uh, it's just a case of can they take those chances Thank you, Nicky. Mike and Nicky will be back with you for the second half of your big match commentary from Bramall Lane, Sheffield United and Manchester City. Scores elsewhere, of course, that one is nil-nil. There was a Haaland penalty miss, of course, in that first half um, at Bramall Lane. Also, it's Burnley nil, Aston Villa 2. In League One, in Rugby League, it finished Cornwall 18, Rochdale Hornets 12. And Max Verstappen leads from Sergio Perez at the Dutch Grand Prix. Anna Jameson at breakfast. BBC Radio Manchester. This has been named as Edinburgh Festival's top gag. I started dating a zookeeper, but it turned out he was a cheater. Mm. I don't even think that's funny. No, it's not. I think it's rubbish. I like this one by um, Amos Steele. Last year, I had a great joke about inflation, but it's hardly worth it now. Brilliant. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> I entered the How Not to Surrender competition, and I won hands down. Brilliant. <laughs> Anna Jameson, a breakfast. Back on Tuesday morning from 6. BBC Radio Manchester. Total Sports. BBC Radio Manchester. Radio Manchester. Manchester. Well, it's Manchester Pride this weekend, which celebrates everything LGBT about the city and the parade happened yesterday. You can listen back to our coverage from midday on BBC Sounds. The vigil will take place on Monday. A conversation that needs more volume around LGBT is inclusive, inclusivity in sport, particularly around football. Well, our very own Mike Mine has hosted a panel of players, officials and fans for Football Pride. It's available as a podcast right now as part of our We're Not Really Here podcast and here's some of what you can expect to hear from it. Cost of fuss is definitely changing. You know, I definitely feel a lot more comfortable, especially the younger community. They're a lot more inclusive, understanding, accepting. Older fans and some older players, it maybe does still take a wee bit of time. But again, it's just lack of education. A lot of the hate or anyone that's shouting pejorative or homophobic language, I truly believe a lot of it is just lack of education. They're not truly understanding the heart 
that it could give to someone that's standing right next to them or who they're projecting that onto on the field. Being a black man playing football and being bisexual, it hasn't necessarily been the easiest experience. Um, and I do believe that led to me being very insecure with myself. I'm still in an adjustment period in terms of the cultural aspect of representing the LGBTQ plus community from a different perspective. I now have a lot more conversation with family and friends. Coming out as a gay football referee, to me, I've been quite lucky where I've never suffered any homophobic abuse and I've always, you know, just accepted who I am and I've got on with it. It happens, I see it happen, I see it on a weekly basis happen on grassroots as well. I've got lots of friends who are straight, uh, lots of people approach me who are straight, who, who are really interested in the journey, who are really interested in how it's been. But there is still those people sitting in silence. And you know, I've been there, so many people have been there, and they're the people that we need to try and reach now. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me was just how difficult it was to come out when playing football and being surrounded by the football environment. It can feel quite toxic at times. The biggest thing from that perspective is, is you can't be what you can't see the quote that I always used to say to myself was like the fear of losing is more powerful than the prospect of gain by being a representation of a successful gay man in sport yeah I think that's just really powerful and if I had that growing up then it would have been huge to see that representation and visibility touch on Jordan Henderson for quite a long time a very good ally for the LGBTQ plus community it does sort of feel like a slap in the face for the community but for Aaron Ramsdale and him speaking about his brother and his brother's experiences and their experience as a family I mean that was so heartwarming so for someone at the absolute elite level such as Aaron Ramsdale to highlight the community and also highlight his family's personal experiences I think is amazing to be honest days like this I really have to stop for a moment and reflect and think but how lucky we are to have people around us like this today. I think we are all going in a really positive direction. The one thing that we have to do um, as a collective is talking about it more. And I think the final point for me is visibility. Visibility is key because unfortunately when I was younger, I didn't really see many people that I thought were like me. And you'll be able what you got. And you'll be able to hear our special episode of We're Not Really Here, Manchester Pride special after 4.30 on BBC Radio Manchester today. And also you can find it on BBC Sounds. Let's get a bit of reaction to yesterday on Total Sport now, though. Manchester United came back from two goals down to beat a 10-player Nottingham Forest at Old Trafford for the first time in Premier League history. United found themselves two goals behind inside four minutes after an abysmal start. Then Ericsson, Casemiro and Fernandes does turned it around All right, start. and it goes into the middle of the penalty area. there's a scramble and it's gone in I cannot believe this Manchester United 2-0 down Nottingham Forest I've got a second goal but then uh, the character of the team uh, was brilliant uh, stay so calm stay so composed uh, get back in the game um, uh, stick to the belief stick to the plan especially and then you see uh, we played some very good football Scored three good goals, so a brilliant comeback. Here's Marcus Rashford into the area, onto his left foot. What can he do across the face? And it's turned in, and it's Christian Eriksen who's done it. Christian Eriksen gets one back for Manchester United from close range. Rashford then plays it in. Fernandez continues his run, squares it. Here's Casemiro. It's 2 2. Manchester United back level at the start of the second half. It was a strange free kick, but it's worked. Absolutely, it is absolutely a marker. And you see this team can bounce back also in a game. If you have such a start, you have to get over. And it's not easy, but the team did. And so a big compliment to the team. Bruno Fernandes to take it. United with two down in this game. This goes in, this place is going to erupt. It's Fernandes, right footed, and he scores! To the goalkeeper's right, turn the dive the right way. Fernandes has buried it. I enjoyed it. Um, of course, you get the goals, who you concede, you really so upset, but the goals we scored, I really enjoyed it. Reds boss Eric Ten Hag there following United's comeback at Old Trafford yesterday. That's two wins and a defeat to start their season. More reaction on the Devil's Advocate podcast, which you can download from tomorrow afternoon. Second match, uh, sorry, second half of big match commentary on the way. If you want to get involved, you can text us on 81333. Start your message with the word Mank. We're on WhatsApp on 08000 321 treble 3. Also start your message with the word Mank on Twitter at BBC. 
BBC RM Sports. And of course, we'll be taking your calls at the conclusion of the game 0800 218 2255, where I shall be putting your questions and comments to Nikki Weaver and Mike Mine. So do get in touch. Quick reminder that from five o'clock today on Total Sport, it'll be all things rugby league with Jack Dearden and Trevor Hunt alongside me. Well, time for your second half now. Big match commentary from Bramall Lane. It's Sheffield United and Manchester City. And your commentary team of former City goalkeeper Nicky Weaver and Mike Miner. Stacey, thank you. Yeah, players back out. Uh, no half-time substitutions. Just that one in the first half for Sheffield United. With uh, Osborne going off injured, so LaRucci replaced him. Fodderingham in goal. For the Blades, Ahmed Hodzic, Egan and Robinson as their back three. Although, really, it's been a back five defensively for Sheffield United with Baldock and uh, now LaRucci filling in there as we get underway in the second half. Norwood, uh, Souza in the midfield. Uh, Hamer and Traore with Asula up front. Complete the Sheffield United team. For City, Edison in goal. Walker, Diaz, Vardiol and Ake, the back four, Bernardo Silva, Rodri and Kovacic in midfield, Alvarez, Grealish and Haaland uh, up front. City now in those sky blue shirts, white shorts, sky blue socks are right to left in this second half. Sheffield United in their red and white vertical striped shirts, thick striped shirts as well. Uh, black shorts and black socks are from left to right. Ake on the halfway line for Manchester City. Now to Ruben Diaz out on the right hand side. We saw Michael Brown, the former Manchester City midfielder, at half time in the, uh, in the press room. Uh, interestingly, Sheffield United's last win over Manchester City outside of the top flight was in January 2000 in the Championship. The goal that day for Sheffield United scored by Michael Brown. The goalkeeper that day for Manchester City won Nicky Weaver. Yeah, I remember it well. We just saw Brown here, you know, a couple of months before, and, you know, as plenty of ironies in football and he popped up and he scored about a 20 yard volley remember it well flew past you is uh, Sheffield United on the ball but lose it pretty quickly story of the first half that now story of the second half as well with uh, Diaz on the ball for Manchester City Burnley have started the second half quickly goal back for them against Aston Villa so Burnley won Aston Villa 2 Bernardo Silva Walker Silva again corner of the penalty area left footed cross headed away by Robinson and then Traore went to battle for it. The loose ball fell to Rodri, who probably tried a brownie. It didn't quite come off, and yeah. over the bar it goes. Brownies weren't quite 40 yards out, that is for sure. I'm not sure, uh, you know, I can't remember him scoring from 40 yards on his left foot before, but worth an effort, I suppose. But yeah, City, you would expect the second half to carry on, you know, as the first half did. Sheffield United looking to hit City on the counter attack. Uh, City dominate possession, but they've just got to be a bit more clinical, a bit more ruthless and a bit more creativity around, uh, around the Sheffield United box. And Sheffield United in their last Premier League campaign set the record for the longest winless run at the start of the season. 17 games. It took them till January till they beat Newcastle United here at home. Newcastle's fortunes were a bit different then. They could, if they lose today, be three from three without a win. Sheffield United City with a win could be three from three, but in terms of wins at the start of the season, they'd be the only Premier League team to do that. Diaz is crossing the right-hand side, goes no, no one in the sky blue shirt. The head of back though comes to Rodri. Edge of the penalty area, he's done the same again over the barn by some distance as well. Very on Rodri, three minutes into the second half. Sheffield United nil, Manchester City nil. Yeah, it fell to him, it's a defensive error that fell to him. Oh, he's 18 yards out and he's just leaning back a little bit, but that's a glorious chance. You'd expect him to at least work West Fotheringham there and you could see, um, you know, how frustrated he was that he didn't hit the target. The effort before was a bit more of a speculative effort. That was, a, you know, a real chance. He, he has to score, doesn't he, uh, in that position, Rodri, or at least get it on target. Probably more fairly to him. Nil-nil. Sheffield United go long for the goal kick. Fotheringham learned from that in the first half when they tried to play out from the back in City's high press caused their defence some issues. The sun's gone in, overcast now at Bramall Lake, and the wind's picked up again as well, which will delight both myself and Nicky Weaver, who failed really to prepare properly for Sheffield weather. You should know better, you live here. No excuses for me. <laughs> it's Rodri on the left-hand side for Manchester City. Walker, 
bright orange boots strapped to his feet. He sends in a early cross that is picked off by Sheffield United. Jack Robinson and away out towards the far side. Here's LaRucci. Turns up against Walker. Wants to play the 1-2 with Norwood and hasn't quite got it together. Alvarez now on the right-hand touchline picks the ball up. Wins a throw-in. And Manchester City on that far side. It's a quick one as well, but as Haaland charged to the far side of the penalty area, so did uh, Egan. And uh, out for another throw-in on the far side. Interesting that I think it's Doku, Cole Palmer and Phil Foden warming up, so whether they might be uh, 60 minutes seems to be a really popular mark for substitutions these days. Um, so it'd be nice to get a look at uh, Doku today and see what he's all about. Well, he would be something different, wouldn't he? He'd be attacking down the right flank, you would imagine, with a lot of pace. Be interesting to see how quickly he can link up with his teammates. Here's Alvarez on the edge of the day. Oh, he chested it up. I thought he was setting himself for the volley. It didn't quite happen. Now Rodri, a couple of misplaced shots from him, flicks it to the right-hand side. Walk alone. Harland's there! Oh, he's wide! Well, Fodderingham had already committed down to his right-hand side. Harland had sent it the other side of him, but also the other side of the post. Nil-nil. Yeah, he's good play from City, good play from Rodri. Put it wide to um, to Kyle Walker, who cuts it back for Haaland. Um, eight yards out, you'd expect him to see. got to hit the target. Uh, I know it comes on his right-hand side, it bounces in front of him, but um, yeah, he's got to score for me. Has to. Best chance so far, apart from the penalty that he missed. He just cannot find the target here at Bramall Lane this afternoon. Erling Haaland. Burnley 1, Aston Villa 2, the other latest score in the Premier League today from 4.30. Newcastle against Liverpool, which is a really big test. Newcastle have had a couple of big early tests in the Premier League this season. Lost against City last time out. And now Liverpool at St James's Park today. We'll see how that one goes. Don't forget you can have your say after the game here at Bramall Lane. Total Sports phone in 0800 218 2255. Nicky Weaver and Stacey Copeland will take your calls till about 20 to 5. And then a chance to hear our special We're Not Really Here podcast uh, ahead of this game, but all surrounding Manchester Pride, which is this weekend. If you're celebrating, hope you've had a good time. And uh, then from 5 o'clock, we talk rugby league. Jack, Trevor and Stacey. Your Sunday trio to talk all things rugby league, and there's plenty to discuss after the weekend's games. It is sent away by Sheffield United after a lot of play on the edge of the box by Manchester City. Ball has rebounded all the way into the city half, and Edison probably just fancied a touch, really. He's come midway inside his own half, and he started the playoff. And now there's a ball over top. Alvarez watches it go over his shoulder, tries to bring it down. He can't. It runs on through to Fodderingham. Yeah, just six inches above his foot there. He tried to bring it down. Difficult ball over his head, but uh, yeah, I think City sometimes they've got to try and throw it in behind a little bit when Sheffield United, you know, when when they are a little bit higher up, because whenever City get possession, they're sitting so deep. Uh, when they are higher up, can they throw it in behind? Um, as the as the camera zoom in on Doku, so be interesting to see if we see him as we've just spoke about. And uh, also, first sighting we've got of Van Marleo on the edge of the technical area. Walker right hand side wins a corner. Good challenge comes in from Sheffield United. Uh, and their defender out on that far side and Walker concedes the corner he'll be happy with that and Leo after his one minute cameo on the touchline is uh, quickly retreating back to his dugout so corner to City far side the right Alvarez on duty yet again for Manchester City he's had a real mismatch of corners in this game this one is short he slips as he takes it Bernardo Silva there tries the reverse pass those two didn't read each other well and now with the byline the ball goes it is a corner a goal kick rather to Sheffield United yeah just a waste again from City um, been quite frustrating uh, obviously had a couple of great chances but uh, yeah Sheffield United you can see you can sense the belief in the stadium um, be interesting to see if it you know it'll be when City make this uh, change not if uh, who it is, who comes off, and if there's any sort of change in, in the setup. Um, but yes, it's just got to be a little bit more ruthless in around that box. And, um, you know, they've got plenty of the ball, but in and around that box, Sheffield United have defended well. And, you know, City are going to have to take a chance soon. Here's Rodri to the right hand side of him is Ruben Diaz. Sheffield United have five in a line right across their penalty area. BBC Radio Manchester live from Bramall Lane for your total sport commentary this afternoon. Here is uh, Grealish now on the left, trickling his way towards the...
penalty area now just inside it lays it back to Vardiol who rolls the ball under his left boot chooses not to cross it Kovacic has got his back to goal has to turn out towards the right hand side Diaz Walker on the right he'll go with the cross with pace it'll come to Kovacic on the deflection on the edge of the penalty area and the clearance rather from Sheffield United Kovacic controlled in his play uses Vardiol here is Grealish, Grealish into the box, wants it on his right foot, tries the low curling shot that he's blocked off. Now Rodri has it, out to the right-hand side, Walker, cross comes in, downwards, oh no, he didn't connect with it at all. Alvarez, I think he actually put Grealish off and he was in a better position. Vardiol's won a corner, City all over it, Nicky Weaver, but haven't quite got that final product. Not quite got an end product yet, but yeah, again, cross going in from both sides. Um, you know, two or three City players in the box just missing out on the head of Sheffield United defending well, but it's another corner. See if it's better than the last one that they managed to, <laughs> to mess up. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Alvarez with a short corner. This time he doesn't slip. Kovacic returns it back to Alvarez. Block comes in. And it's not gone out of play for a corner nor a throw in on this near side. So Kovacic picks it up. He beat LaRucci to the ball. Here's Bernardo Silva. 25 yards out or so. Out to the right-hand touchline uses Kyle Walker. Nil-nil between Sheffield United and Manchester City. A City side that have won their last five against the Blades. One-nil the last time they were here. Oh, Guardiola and Grealish now not reading each other. I think Guardiola would have been in if, if it had uh, been on the same wavelength as Grealish. Um, but yeah, just a, a little mix-up there. Strange, in the last couple of minutes, that's happened uh, a few times. There are new faces. Will be time to adapt to the city way, maybe. But uh, for now, nil nil. And what's one more Leo pass around there? I'm not sure if he just passed around a set of headphones so they can hear Pep Guardiola or he's passed around the chewing gum. But uh, either way, there is an assistant next to Juan uh, Marleo who has got headphones in and a phone in his hand and that'll be Pep Guardiola and here is Juan Marleo now on his technical area waving City forward they oblige to Kyle Walker on the right hand side 11 second half minutes gone Diaz has space to operate in flicks it on through for Alvarez Haaland wants to return it back to Alvarez but Sheffield United get a little flick on the ball it's about the only touch they've managed to have though because City come again Bernardo Silva 10 yards from the byline two players around him one of them LaRucci here is uh, Rodri, Diaz might go for it, and his shot looks on target, takes a deflection, carries it over the bar, it's another Manchester City corner, John Egan in the way on this, this occasion. Yeah, let's hope they can make a better job of this corner than the last two, they've ended up not getting uh, the ball in the box at all, so it's just all City now, uh, Sheffield United can't get out of their own half, so uh, it's going it's to be a long 35 minutes or so for uh, for Sheffield United if it stays like this. It's definitely settling, isn't it, for Manchester City. 12 second half minutes gone. In goes the corner, foddering him with a double-fisted punch away. It clears the box for now. And within that, Sheffield United have won themselves a free kick for a foul in the box. Obstruction on the keeper, maybe. Not sure. But the Blades fans sarcastically applauding the referee. They feel something's gone in their favour. Yeah, they'll feel they've not had much go in their favour um, this afternoon. They'll feel hard done to by the penalty. Uh, they'll, they'll feel justice was done with Haaland missing it. Um, so, yeah, sarcastic cheer there. But I think at the minute Edison's on the ball for the, probably the first time this half, they'll be uh, relieved just to get the ball away from their own goal. Sheffield United lost nine of the last ten against the reigning Premier League champions. Last beating Leeds in 1993. That long ago. Here's Grealish into the penalty on the left-hand side, looking to stretch that record out. Rodri with a touch, and a low shot. Little touch, dance his left-hand side. He then put everything behind the, with the laces of his left boot, but wide of the right-hand post. And again, by inches, Sheffield United survive. Another Manchester City attack, nil-nil. There's good play from Grealish, sort of probing the defenders. Slips it into Rodri, who takes a lovely touch with his right foot, puts it onto his left foot, and we're right in line with it, Mike, and it just, it was, it was always the wrong side of the post. But a good effort. It looked to be nestling into the bottom right-hand corner. Nicky Weaver's right, we were right behind it. Sheffield United have the ball, Asula, good chest control from here, and then Vardiol. Well, looked like he pulled him down but the referee's given Manchester City a free kick and well that's got the Blade fans on their feet gesticulating to the referee they're not happy Vardiol has gone down injured and Paul Heckingbottom just waves his arms around and just says nonsense to the fourth official 
Yeah, it looks. Uh, it's, I think he must have just. Has he just caught him in the face before? It. Um, it looked for all the intents and purposes. I think there's a flailing arm just caught. Has he just caught him in the face there? I think, uh, yeah, it's a serious challenge. He has caught Vardy in the face unintentionally. Yeah. But the, the majority of the foul, and I've seen he's managed to get himself a yellow card too. The majority of the foul is on Vardiol, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, absolutely. Not uh, the Sheffield United uh, fans would agree, because they're not happy with the referee at all this afternoon. <laughs> Certainly not. Uh, I'll see you at the second man in the book as well then, alongside uh, George Baldock. Here is uh, Walker on the ball. Not going to be able to go forward. Villa have got a third now, so Burnley one, Aston Villa three at Turf Moor. Another three goals shipped at home for the Clarets after City did so on the opening day. Grealish on the left. One past the blades would be nice for Manchester City at the moment. Nil-nil on the hour mark. Uh, Diaby with the goal, by the way, for Aston Villa. Here is uh, Kovacic through to Harlan. This is the chance, and Fodderingham with a brilliant save. Harlan wanted it to lift it over the Sheffield United goalkeeper, but he palms it away and behind for a corner. Yeah, it's a terrific ball slipped through from Kovacic, and he's dinked it, and I tell you what, it's a great left hand from West Fodderingham. He sort of commits himself to narrow the angle. Arlen must think he scored. He just weren't enough pace on the dink, but it's a fantastic save. We all thought it was in, and he just sort of clawed it out of nowhere. Yeah, good save from Pottinger. In goes the corner, near post, all bounces inside the six-yard box. Nobody got a touch on that from Julian Alvarez's uh, corner. <laughs> There's a glitch in the matrix. Traore slipped on the byline. The ball then hit the corner flag, then hit... Traore and didn't go out of play at all. Here is Grealish inside the left hand side at the penalty area. Back heels it to Alvarez who smashes it near post. And Fodderingham is there again. Yeah, he's starting to get a lot more to do now. Fodderingham, he made a great save a minute ago and he's just made a good one there from uh, Alvarez. So yeah, uh, City really ramping it up now. Here's Rodri for Manchester City. Nil nil. Kovacic lets it run on through for Kyle Walker. Scored a screamer on this ground three years ago and very nearly did the same again but that one just lifts over the bar Fodderingham knew that all the way and still Sheffield United nil Manchester City nil I'm not sure how because they had a couple of great chances there Haaland you know on another day could have had three couldn't he um, it was a great chance for him um, again Alvarez had a chance as well great great play from Grealish again was getting more and more of the ball left foot shot from Alvarez and a really good save down to his right hand side from Fodderingham and uh, yeah, he's made two or three good saves in the last five minutes that are keeping Sheffield United in the game. Well, it certainly is. 17 minutes into this second half. Ball in Manchester City's half for now. Blues are right to left in this second 45 minutes. Here is Walker. There are men in front of him. He just lays it to the left-hand side, though, for Rodri. Now Kovacic, who just put Haaland through for that big chance a few moments ago. Grealish. Just creeps his way into the penalty area. No challenge comes in from Baldock. He stands in a back post. Haaland is there. And this time he scores. Manchester City have had to wait 62 minutes. And sheer bombardment of the Sheffield United penalty area. But just past the hour mark, it's a Haaland header at the back post that puts them in front. And it's Sheffield United nil, Manchester City 1. Yeah, terrific play from Grealish. Takes it to the bar line, dings it up with his left foot over Fotheringham. And it's a back post header from Haaland. Uh, he's missed a couple this afternoon, but he was never going to miss that one. Terrific play from uh, Grealish in the build-up. We were just speaking about him before. I was getting more and more involved in the game. He was sort of teasing the defenders. Uh, was he going to go on his right foot, but he takes it on his left, stands a lovely ball up. Um, Harlan pulls away to the back post, really stands a lovely ball up, and it ends up with a simple header. And the City fans behind that goal, celebrating as Harlan just strutted around in front of them. That's what he does. That is goal number 39 for uh, Erling Harlan in the Premier League. He's third of this season. And there's an injury here, it looks like, to Wes Fodering and just seeing what the... I think this the might be the is. old nudge-nudge-wink-wink wink one. Well, right. sometimes when you change the formation, the goalkeeper goes down. <laughs> Paul Eckenbottom has got the player straight in, so there'll be... Uh, I don't think there'll be anything wrong with him here. And he's receiving treatment, the substitute goalkeeper is uh, warming up as well for the Blades. And Fodering 
as his legs stretched by the physio, whether it's how he landed whilst chasing across his own goal for the Haaland header. Simple, nodded down header from two yards at the back post. It'll be quite a relief man, I think, early in Haaland, because he's missed a few chances, um, you know, for his standards. You know, on a different day, he could have had three or four, but uh, a great header. It was a brilliant play from Jack Grealish. Stood it up lovely, uh, and, and it ended up being a simple header. He pulled off to the back post. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, it's for me now, it's Sheffield United have really got to try and stay in the game and keep it at one, but for City, they'll smell blood now and they'll want more. Now, I assume for City, nothing changes. What what changes now for, for Sheffield United, or is it keep it 1-0? and maybe in the last five or ten go and chase that equaliser. Yeah, I think there's plenty of time left in this game. I think if they can uh, keep it as it is for as long as they can. Um, you know, they won't be too disappointed with this because when you play Man City, the game can get, get, get away from you in a five or ten minute period. Um, they've just got to, you know, sit in, try and soak up some more pressure, can they hit City on the counter and then when it, you know, ten minutes to go, then they can start making changes, then they can go a little bit more gung-ho and start committing men forward. <laughs> Possibly in this game, the first time that Sheffield United's defenders have really lost lost Haaland and his, his positioning. And Jack Robinson, despite his best efforts of stretching, was never going to get to that header before Erling Haaland. Sheffield United now come forward. They get close to the byline inside Manchester City's halfway to our right-hand side. The end of the cop here at Bramall Lane. We haven't seen much action in this second half when Sheffield United have been attacking. Here is Kovacic, thought about playing a lovely ball over the top, but thought better of it for Haaland or Alvarez. So 1-0 to Manchester City. 65 minutes on the clock. Here's Kovacic. Infield to Rodri. Rodri will just take a few steadying touches and lays it back 10 yards or so to Joshko Vardiol. Ake inside the centre circle Diaz available to his right hand side and further over is Kyle Walker who just retreats into the city half plays a 1-2 in Rodri and it's all back in the Sheffield United half once again City who have won 12 of their last 13 games against promoted opposition in the Premier League dropping points in a 1-1 draw with Nottingham Forest at the city ground last February the only little blip in that record long ball over the top to the right hand side Walker should keep that in play but then as he packs it down into the six yard box Fodringham is there yeah good ball over the top from uh, Rodri I think it was who put Walker in which they've com combined a few times over through this afternoon and it just skidded off the turf and he couldn't quite get his foot round it to get it into Harlem but the City fans now are you know a bit louder than they have been all afternoon I think they've been a bit frustrated um, as of the players um, but yeah now they've got that, that goal um, you know you can sense a little bit of a deflation in the Sheffield United fans they were quite boisterous before but I think they know the writing's on the wall now Patience definitely the name of the game for City this afternoon but they have got the breakthrough with Erling Haaland five minutes ago since that goal well, it's Diaz to Walker and Diaz again just on the halfway line Sheffield United happy to let Manchester City have the ball there not really pressing or threatening in the formation still five well it's 5-4-1 now isn't it it looks like from Sheffield United as it has been 5-3-2 for large parts of this game here's Grealish Vardiol Ake Manchester City strolling around Diaz inside the centre circle Manchester City's at number three now in his fourth season with the club of the previous three haven't gone too badly so far he's only played in the Community Shield so far this season Ruben Diaz so first chance for him is uh, Grealish Diaz Diaz just outside the centre circle and again back into it okay, I mean City have this at their own yeah, their it's own almost place. like a practice match isn't it Sheffield United don't really want to come out of their slots City are just sort of rolling the ball around sort of 10 yards inside their own half and they're not in a rush Sheffield United don't seem to have any urgency at the moment I think they just want the game to settle down a little bit um, but yeah so it's just uh, it's yeah, pretty boring at the moment <laughs> there you go that's the sell from Nicky Weaver for you to keep listening <laughs> uh, but Oh, following a lovely piece of skill just to dummy it past Julian Alvarez, who was applying the press on this occasion. 1-0 to Manchester City. Here's Kovacic. 
as the Blues look to extend their lead and extend the lead at the top of the Premier League as well. They'll have a two-point cushion as the only side to have won all three games so far this season. Spurs have seven, Arsenal two. Surprising result yesterday for Arsenal, drawing 2-2 at home to uh, 10-man Fulham. Sheffield United are going to make a couple of changes here. Jaden Bogle's preparing to come on, as is Ollie McBurney as well. Here's Bernardo Silva in from the right-hand side. Bernardo Silva's got space to shoot here, twist back to his left-hand side and towards the byline and overran it yet again. Had an option for a shot there, I think. Chose not to take it. Yeah, he's been a little bit quiet this second half, Bernardo. Jack Grealish has seemed to have more of the ball, but he chopped and turned and twisted there and just sort of lost the ball at uh, the crucial point where he thought he was just about to pull the trigger. Looks like Sheffield United are going to make uh, a double substitution here. Yeah, Bogle and Norwood at McBurney ready to come on. Attacking from Paul Hecking bottom in fairness with those substitutions, so it'll be interesting to see if it is like to like or if he's... Got something else on his mind. Alvarez feeds it through for Haaland. He's in again here, Erling Haaland. He's offside, he's offside. And the flag goes up instantly. It did look that way. The finish was nice. He had to play on. Tucks it into the left-hand side at the near post of the goalkeeper. But he'll be denied that second goal, and so will Manchester City. Sheffield United nil, Manchester City won. I don't know why they, they can't... You know, when it's, it's so obvious he's offside, I don't know why they can't uh, raise the flag there. So George Baldock, who was on a yellow card, replaced by Jaden Bogle and Will Ashula, who's had a difficult task this, uh, this afternoon. He's up front on his own. The support has been minimal, and he's replaced by Ollie McBurney. Yeah, it, it's been difficult for Ashula. He's put himself about a bit. He's not had great support. He's not had great service into him. It, you know, he's got physical lads around him as well, so it's very difficult to play against. Uh, you know, this city back four. So yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not saying he'll be pleased to get off, but he'll be uh, he'll enjoy his drink of water on the bench, I think. And it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, Oliver Burney puts himself around a little bit and they'll be looking for him for a bit of inspiration now. Josh Govardio standing very close to Oli McBurney and happy to let him win that header as well. Here is Traore. McBurney right-hand corner of the penalty area will be forced out towards the corner flag and his little flip ball inside hits uh, Rodri. Now Grealish can carry it forward. Surely trips as he cuts in field. Yeah, free kick. And he stayed down here, Grealish, and he's waving his arm in the air in some pain down there. I think he wants to attract the attention of the physios. He felt that one. Yeah, it might have been a knee into his thigh there. He's brilliant at drawing the foul, Jack Grealish. He had, he had sort of nowhere to go. He's got two Sheffield United players on him. He just knocks the ball. And, you know, although he's got, uh, I think he was trying to draw the foul. Uh, I think he was the most foul player in the Premier League last year, I think, if that's right. He's had that record for about two or three years, yeah. now, Jack Grealish. Um, just the way he plays, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but he does look genuinely hurt here. So it'll be interesting to see if. Uh, you know, we do see a, a, a Doku or a Foden. Manchester City and injuries. I'm going hand in hand this season a little bit. Kevin De Bruyne are out for four months. John Stones won't be back with uh, until the international break. He's got a muscle injury. They've only just welcomed Ruben Diaz back. And where they are, perhaps looking for reinforcements, is out on the wings. And they're doing that because they don't feel they have enough already in that part of the field. So to lose Greenish would be a big blow. He is up, he's walking okay. And he'll just stand on the sidelines uh, for a moment, having a chat with the fourth official, David Coote, down there as well. So Sheffield United nil. Manchester City won with uh, 17 minutes left of the 90. I think the new rule is you can't go back on now for 30 seconds. Is that right? Yeah, because if you look, he's not he'd normally be yeah, itching yeah. to go on, wouldn't he? Larucci down the wing. Kyle Walker slides in on that far side. The fourth official won't let him back on yet. He's got to wait for 30 seconds now. Which probably makes it. It was an old stupid thing, wasn't it? They'd go off and then they'd be back on within, within a second. Obviously, benefits the team, but... Seems a bit pointless going off if you're just going to make them do that. Anyway, Sheffield United here have a throw in on the far side, level with the corner of the penalty area. Grealish is now allowed to return to the field, and this throw in is going into the box. The cop stands on its feet. Edison makes the call, he puts it down into the ground. Shot comes in from distance and absolutely belts Ruben Diaz, but he's thrown his body on the line. He makes the block and stops Sheffield United finding an un unlikely equaliser. 
Dead, you're not gone yet. Long range shot will drift well wide. Ambitious, maybe. Worth the effort from Anilad Modzlet, Ahmed Hodzic, but uh, still can't find a way through for Sheffield United. What a block from Ruben Diaz. Yeah, a couple of hairy moments there. It comes a long way, does Edison. Gets a half a punch on it. And, yeah, it comes out to Hamer, I think. And, um, yeah, Ruben Diaz throws his body on the line. He's got his arms behind his back. Fantastic defending. Um, yeah, and then there was a, a poor clearance again from Edison. So, yeah, a couple of hairy moments for Edison. And probably Sheffield United's best... Uh, two efforts on goal really so yeah just shows that uh, at 1-0 it's not all over certainly not and that might give Sheffield United uh, a little bit of hope 1-0 to Manchester City Edison short inside his own penalty here, despite the pressure on Rodri from Traore that's where he went with the ball return back to Edison who now goes out to the right hand side for Diaz back more once more to the Manchester City goalkeeper City at the moment keeping a clean sheet they haven't kept a clean sheet in their first three Premier League games of a season since 2015 under Manuel Pellegrini never done it under Pep Guardiola not many records that are perhaps negative about the Manchester City boss but that's one of them they can keep three successive clean sheets not only at the start of the season but for the first time in the Premier League as a Manchester City side since December 2021 as well Alvarez from distance edge of the penalty area Ball skips along the turf and well wide of the left-hand post. 15 minutes left in this game. Manchester City leading. Sheffield United, though, with a warning sign. Their danger is if they go too far forward. Absolutely. Um, but you just like that second goal, wouldn't you? Just to sort of calm the nerves a little bit. Because while ever it's 1-0, as it was last week, there's always, you know, you've always got a fighter's chance. Um, you know, they've made a couple of positive substitutions, Sheffield United. So they've got a corner now, so... Um, yes, yeah, but see, you've got to make sure they defend this right and don't, don't give Sheffield United a sniff. Uh, given that reaction, I'll just confirm it is a corner, not a goal. Um, they were straight on their feet, all the Sheffield United fans. A a Ake slid in, ball this goes is, over the byline. This is the situations that they want, though. It's going to be very difficult for them to open City up, but if they can, uh, you know, score from a set piece, that's, you know, the work on them hard in training. Uh, one thing I would say, City's got a very, very big team, um, so it's going to be difficult to get the first contact. Norwood out swinging delivery from the right hand side. Header is there, just wide from Ollie McBurney, who charged in to the front of the pack, 10 yards out, but sends it wide of the right hand post. Yeah, he's pulled off Ollie but it's a really difficult header because he's probably in line with the penalty spot, but also in line with the front post as well, and it slightly behind him, and he couldn't quite get enough direction on it, but it just shows you see, you've got to be careful here. Um, as you said, you know, it sounded like Sheffield United had scored then and they only got a corner, so the fans are still up for it. Um, and so you've just got to be careful here, and it would be nice to get that uh, all important second goal. A couple of warning signs in the last couple of minutes for Manchester City on BBC Radio Manchester. Lovely play by Edison to Alvarez just outside the centre circle. He turns it round for Bernardo Silva, who is now on the charge down the middle of the pitch, and he's pulled over. Instant yellow card, and rightly so, I think, too, for uh, Vinny Souza as Bernardo set off again like the first half we saw it several times the only way you're going to stop City in a run like that is to uh, pull them down yeah, that's cool for a fantastic player this one the ball clips it out to Alvarez he's turned it around the corner first time into Silva and the next minute he's getting a foul on the edge of their box um, so yeah really dangerous for me it'd be interesting to see who, uh, who fancies this one I think Alvarez has he's placed the ball so I think he fancies it he has been the set piece man today this to give Manchester City a little bit of breathing space and Chris Basham preparing to come on for Sheffield United Look well. at there's a little pep talk here going from there's Ruben Diaz I think Bernardo, Jack Grealish, Alvarez I don't know if they're going to try and work something from this yeah. free kick but they're definitely trying to talk about yeah. something yeah. What have they done in training here? What can they practice? It's pretty central ever so slightly to the left it is 25 yards from goal, most definitely within shooting range. And there is a huge Sheffield United wall with a couple of City players intercepting that wall. You imagine they'll break away. Well, I imagine and West Fotheringham's got a good view of this because there's so many men in between. Oh, there's a little view now, perhaps. Oh, little, Diaz has got to stood there. A little window. City are going to move out the way here as Alvarez goes for goal. And Fotheringham parries round the post. It's a corner. Yeah, you could just see Diaz then. He just dragged a couple over with him to try and block West Fotheringham's view. It's a decent free kick, but it didn't really get enough pace on. And it's not in the corner, and it ends up being a pretty comfortable save for uh, West Fotheringham. Yeah, good palms away from the goal to the uh, 
right hand at the uh, left hand side as we look at it so corner to City Jack Grealish on this one Alvarez stands on the edge of the D with Bernardo Silva this one goes towards the six yard box header away by McBurney he's at both ends doing his heading duties as Kovacic flicks it up Grealish will try and get the turn on the route sheet will he get the cross in no he needs support out there he's got two Sheffield United players around him tries to play it off one of them to win the corner somehow squeezes it through to Joshko Vardial who goes down and Sheffield United struggling to clear it at the minute with uh, Oli Norwood they do to the halfway line eventually Vardial is back on his feet after going down momentarily throw into the blades on this near side they're right this is the time that we see the former Bolton and Rochdale man in Chris Basham it is and he's going to replace uh, Oli Norwood as well yeah Basham has been at Sheffield out for years now he's, he's had a few promotions with him bit of a fan's favourite um, he'll try and get the ball carry it a bit further he'll probably be a bit higher than uh, Norwood was so yeah again Sheffield United they've got just over 10 minutes to try and uh, rescue something out of this game yeah, Basham now 35 years old joined the club in 2014 his 388th Sheffield United appearance in all competitions now 10 minutes left of this game on BBC Radio Manchester and it's Manchester City that lead by a goal to nil continuing their perfect start to the season here's Hamer and towards the left hand side Robinson Larucci in towards Traore a run had been made there by Hamer and Traore tries not to go for it he's been fouled he's won a free kick Sheffield United fans are happy with that again I can imagine the, uh, the Sheffield phoning afterwards is going to be very much based around the referee I think. yeah I mean we're looking at obviously from, from blue tinted glasses aren't we <laughs> it's been sort of okay from our point of view but yeah the Sheffield United fans will not be happy with the referee and they've, uh, they've let him know that that said there was some talk in the press room at half time that maybe Manchester City should have had a couple of more penalties given to them in the first half so uh, Jared Gillett not everybody's cup of tea today here are the blades on the right hand side with uh, Ahmed Hodzic Larucci oh easily guides his way past Bernardo Silva gets himself forward on the left hand side the run is made by Traore and he's got the pace to go around Kyle Walker who brings him down and Gillett is unmoved again the referee says no had a decision to make might have just been outside the box but either way it seemed a little risky from Kyle Walker yeah I don't think there was enough in it for me Traore gets the run on him it's a good ball in from Lamucci he has a good touch gets the run he puts his arm across but I don't think there's enough there it's better to be the softest penalty I've ever seen I think oh, but, it's uh, outside the box as well isn't it I think it, yeah yeah he goes yeah, down he didn't get the, the run on him though you know it was a dangerous situation um, and here comes the long throw into the box which is towards the six yard box it's taken on the chest of uh, Vinny Souza Made away by Manchester City it is another throw in to the blade so reset inside the penalty area because there's only one place that this is going or not as it goes back towards the halfway line eight minutes left Manchester City leading 1-0 now Sheffield United no they've gone through 82 minutes will they start to apply a little bit more pressure and Bramall Lane will certainly help with that a second City goal could really finish it off and they're going to try and get it Haaland's going down the middle can Grealish find him no nicked in the back he goes down it's a foul and a free kick and Hodzic is not impressed Egan goes into the book for the foul and Manchester City have a free kick yeah, it looks as though Grealish could have just got the ball through there for uh, Haaland who made a great run I don't think there'd have been any stopping him so there's no reason for uh, Grealish to go down um, and I think he just gets a little yeah he just drags him down and again I think Grealish is looking for it so might be a little bit of an unfortunate yellow card but is the master at it Jack Grealish the fourth Sheffield United player to go into the book the second one to go in the book following a foul on Jack Grealish who's uh, Ake back to his own goalkeeper in Edison the sun back out at Bramall Lane shining on the pitch little strip on this near side running the full length of the pitch in shade and with the entire of West Fodderingham's box in shade as well but the rest of the pitch bathed in the warm sunshine of South Yorkshire with six and a half minutes left to go one nil to City Haaland told you there's just not many goals in this fixture 11 goals in 
the previous 10 games in the Premier League. Here is Grealish forward for Manchester City from the left-hand corner of the penalty. Just lays it back for Kovacic on the edge of the D. Low shot. And Fotheringham dies down to his left-hand side, makes the save. Might have seen that late. It's a good save from the Sheffield United goalkeeper. Yeah, decent save. Didn't really get all of the shot. Cover City was just sort of slipping, I think, as he hits it. Um, not really too much. So it looks like Man City might be making a sub here um, as the card goes into the fourth official. Who yeah. emerges from that dugout, tripped off and ready to come on. Here is uh, Traore on the left-hand side. He's going to give Walker more nightmares. Not that time. Well, Walker's back healed it and giving it to Traore, who lays it into the middle for Basham. Might come to this near side. Here is Bogle. Sheffield United have played their game and they've got their rewards. Bogle in space on the right hand side fires it into the bottom left hand corner and Sheffield United are level against the champions and they've got their goal. It's a big goal and a big team celebration on this near side. Sheffield United won. Manchester City won. Yeah, I don't know what Carl Walker's doing over the far side of the area. He's tried to back heel the ball. It's gone straight to Torre. It ends up, I don't know what he's doing, Carl Walker. He's in fully in control of it. He can kick it out for a throw and he's tried to back heel it to Bernardo Silva. Uh, the ball gets broken out to Jaden Bogle, who's had a touch, but he has a thunderous shot. I think uh, McBurney, oh, I think this one could be disallowed. I think McBurney's in Edison's way, yeah. So, yeah, it's all to do with interference of play here, isn't it? Bogle shot, drilled through, past Vardy, or past Ake. Now, does McBurney obstruct Edison? I think the ball's past him, isn't it? I think this will stand. Yeah, it looks like he's been given. So, uh, it would have been even less popular than he already was, but Phil Foden's on now. Um, so, City need a real spark into life now. They're going to have five minutes, plus, four minutes plus injury time to try and uh, salvage a win out of this game. We always said they needed that second goal. They didn't get it. They've been uh, wasteful in front of goal. Um, let's hope it doesn't cost them. Kovacic replaced by Phil Foden then. Feeling a little bit early, travelled to the game on his own, but now the best medicine would be to help Manchester City to a win and Walker wants to make amends here he's Foden in the penalty area lays it off shot goes over the bar from Julian Alvarez right footed the perfect layoff it was the perfect play down the right from City but Alvarez digs under it and over the bar and he's still 1-1 yeah great play from Carl Walker down the right hand side jinx in between a couple of defenders gives it to Foden who jumps past someone and it was just a little bit awkward for Alvarez he couldn't quite get his foot round it and a little bit of lean back and he's put it over um, but it, Bramall Lane's really rocking now uh, but they've probably got a good good 10 or 12 minutes to go yet so uh, plenty of time for City 1-1 third Premier League game of the season no one in the Premier League has a 100% record after three games Arsenal and Spurs with seven Brighton slipped up yesterday losing at home to West Ham City stalling here at the lane 1-1 just shows you when you're wasteful mark in front of goal like they have been um, you know you think you're going to be okay but all it takes is one strike or a deflected shot or a set piece um, you know and let's hope it doesn't cost City because ultimately they'll shut themselves in the foot Foden's won the ball back gives it to Alvarez he wants to put in Haaland but Sheffield United have managed to get a little nick on the ball to take it away from the Norwegian here's Grealish on the left hand side picking up that loose ball into the penalty area he goes back to Foden who's got his back to goal and has to lay it out to this near side touchline for Bernardo Silva cross comes in Haaland attacks and misses by fractions if there was any connection, that's in. Walker's won it back on the touchline on the far side. Now he puts a low ball into Foden. Rodri! Oh! Thunderous hit! First time hit! And City are back in front. The ball nearly rips the net off. And Manchester City with two minutes left in his second half might just have won it. Sheffield United 1, Manchester City 2. Yeah, and the City fans are really enjoying that. He's had a couple of efforts this afternoon, Rodri, but he's absolutely lashed that into the top corner of the goal. Um, and you say since, since Sheffield United have scored, they've had a couple of good chances, City. Um, Sheffield United all over the place at the back. Walker's been really good down that right-hand side. Uh, Foden's had some nice, intricate touches around the edge of the box. 
Uh, but it's a ball in. Haaland looks like he's going to get on the end of it. Kyle Walker retrieves it. Lamucci should do better here. He's tried to guide it out. Um, Walker cuts back in. Into Foden. Has a bit of a dodgy touch and it. Well, I don't. It could go down as an assist for Foden, perhaps, but he has a bit of a bad touch and it falls to uh, to Rodri and he's absolutely lashed it into. The, I don't think four goalkeepers would have stopped that. He's gone right in the top corner. Away from home this season, Manchester City have only had two scorers so far. Erling Haaland and Rodri against Burnley. And it's Erling Haaland and Rodri against Sheffield United. What a hit. Flew into the top left-hand corner. He had a couple of dodgy shots at the start of the second half, Rodri. That one makes a man. And the same for Kyle Walker too, who you could hold responsible for the Sheffield United goal. But Burnley though, he's going to chip it in. And how has Sheffield United not equalised there? Who is diving in? I think it's Ahmed Hodzic diving in, stretching at the back post. McBurney set it up beautifully on the right-hand side. Space for him, hung the cross up, pass for Ruben Diaz at the back post. I don't know why he didn't go with his head. Maybe it's a bit far in front it's of him, great. but yeah, it's a great chance. And it, do you know what? He's been um, more entertaining in the probably last 10 minutes than it has for the, you know, the first 80. It's come alive. Ahmed Hodzic, you're right. Kind of karate kicked it in the end, didn't he? Seven minutes. That might give Sheffield United some hope. City will want daylight between themselves and the Blades. Ball over the top. All oh, the defence has missed that. Here's Haaland in the penalty area. Oh, he wants the back. What's with all the back heels today? Because Haaland's now tried one and Foden can't get on the end of it and Sheffield United are able to see it up to the halfway line. Here's Diaz. Knocks it down for Rodri. Grealish, loose ball, falls to the England international. Manchester City leading this one 2-1. Sheffield United thought they'd got a crucial point. Manchester City heading for three wins and three at the start of the season. Here's Walker. Diaz. Back to Walker again in space. City probably want to calm this down a little bit. Yeah, they just need to get some passes in, you know, spread the pitch. Oof, but Carl Walker again, a loose pass, nearly got cut out. They've been their own worst enemy, really. Um, they've missed chances. Obviously, Kyle Walker made the mistake for the goal. Um, so, yeah, they just, they've just invited a little bit of pressure on. And you've got to finish these sort of games off, because, you know, if you keep doing it throughout the season, there'll be times... Here we are again, look. Diaz with a misplaced pass. Here's LaRucci, responsible for City's second goal. Wants to try and get Sheffield United level with the left-footed shot that he digs under. A bit like Alvarez five minutes ago or so, and over the bar and into the cop. Yeah, they've been really sloppy, City. Um, Diaz there, pretty much comfortable possession. Pays it straight out to Lamucci. Plays a 1-2. And he, sh he should do better, Lamucci, there. He snatched at the shot. Probably saw the headlines tomorrow in the papers. Uh -huh. um, but, yeah, Sheffield United have had, had the chances, even after City's second goal. Um, and there's still another five minutes left. And we are well above average goals in this fixture with three today. A fourth would uh, be really abnormal. Edison with the goal kick, nothing fancy from him, he's going long, he's absolutely pelted that, nearly to the edge of the D inside the Sheffield United half, Grealish, he's fouled, free kick, left hand side of the field. Yeah, again, just City just need to settle this down a little bit, it's got a little bit, it's a game that they should be in total control of, and it's just got a little bit frantic, um, so they've got to try and take the sting out of the game. Um, Sheffield United are going to go all out guns blazing this next four or five minutes um, and see, they've just got to you know they've been in this situation so many times um, and they've got Pep will be absolutely um, you know they'll be jumping out of his bed I think he, um, his hospital bed but yeah just, <laughs> just been so sloppy and so careless at the back 0800 218 the phone lines are open on Total Sport to have your say with Nicky Weaver it's about half past four this, this afternoon 20 to 5 and a chance to hear our latest uh, We're Not Really Here podcast, the Manchester Pride special. But the number you need is 0800 218 2255. Stacey will be joined by Jack and Trevor after five for your rugby league chat as well, your traditional hour of rugby league talk on the way. Same phone number if you want to get involved with that as well. 0800 218 2255. Foden shot from the right of the penalty area. Deflects. And Manchester City have a corner on this near side the left. Yeah, I don't think there'll be any rush to take this. Um, he's looked really bright since he come on. Uh, Phil Foden, he's got the ball in some um, some dangerous areas. Um, you know, obviously, as you said, he's, he's been ill overnight, so he came here separately, but uh, 
But yeah, he's come on, he's looked really bright. Um, and I think City now will just take the time with his corner. It's not often you see City uh, trying to run the clock down like this at somewhere like Sheffield United, but needs must. And uh, at the end of the day, the performance has been sort of OK. They've just been a little bit wasteful in front of goal, not been great in their own box. Uh, but what you would imagine to be a comfortable afternoon has turned out anything but. But ultimately, in the end, if they end up with the three points, that's the main thing. Three points on the way, three minutes left of added time at the end of this second half. City toying with Sheffield United in the corner down towards our left-hand side, City's near side. Um, eventually Sheffield United are able to clear it, Traore, little push on Nathan Ake, yeah, free kick given. And the Blades fans won't like that, Traore won't like that, but uh, it was a push. Ake down on the floor, he's up now. Uh, it has finished at Turf Moor, Burnley 1, Aston Villa 3. So life in the Premier League, a little difficult for the Clarets so far. Two games for them, two defeats, conceding three in both of those goal, uh, games as well. Rain started to set in at Bramall Lane as well. A little bit of drizzle with the wind swirling round. Drizzle whips around on the pitch. Rodri, two minutes left. Manchester City 2-1 up. Oh, Foden. So creative since he's come on. Sets Walker on the right-hand side. Low ball into the box. Hits Foden. He'll keep it in on the byline as well. The cross is deep. And Jack Grealish will bring the ball down just outside the left of the penalty area. Bardiol in support, but it's infield where Grealish goes to use Bernardo Silva. Foden on the turn. Foden with the skill. Alvarez tries to help him out a little bit as the ball ran away from him. Sheffield United... Win it back. Bogle, their goal scorer. Helps to start them off. They've piled the ball forward. Vardiol reads it well. Game a little stretched here. The field certainly a little bit stretched. And City, with the control, could have probably, at a different point in the game, would have pressed Sheffield United a lot more there and really worried their defence. They don't have to. They lead 2-1. Here's Bernardo Silva. That's Nicky Weaver for his uh, player of the match in just a moment. Diaz out on the right-hand side. Here is Phil Foden, man of the match against Newcastle United. He's only had a cameo here, but he's been so noticeable since he came on. As Manchester City led through Haaland. Bogle equalised for Sheffield United late on, but a couple of minutes after that, Rodri was there to fire City back in front. Into the final minute of the game, then City inside their own half, just on the edge of the centre circle with Ruben Diaz. Who gets play of the match for you, Nicky Weaver, today? Well, a difficult one, really, because it's not been a vintage City performance, uh, but I think Jack Grealish has, has come into the game second half. He set the first goal up with a, a bit of... Great wing play and a bit of trickery. So I'll give it to Jack Grealish, although it's not been a, a vintage uh, City performance by all means. Um, you know, one or two disappointing performances out there, really. And it's been a disappointing performance, but ultimately um, it, it's a game that they should have comfortably, you know, had the lead. And the last sort of 20, 20 minutes, half an hour should have been comfortable if it's been anything. But, but credit Chef United for that. Edison under a bit of pressure from McBurney, just blasts it into the Sheffield United half. Many fans feel that their day is done at Bramall Lane and head for the exits as well. They have held on. The Sheffield United have more than held on at times. That is the seven minutes up at Bramall Lane for added time. So down to Jared Gillett now. And it is only a minimum. He can add on what he wants. Is he going to give Sheffield United one last attack? Diaz heads it back towards the halfway line. The full-time whistle goes. Well, in the words of Nicky Weaver, it wasn't vintage, but Manchester City make it three wins from three to start the season. Erling Haaland putting them ahead on 62 minutes. And then as Sheffield United held on and held out the 1-0 deficit, they started to attack a little bit more. Substitute Jaden Bogle tucking it into the bottom left-hand corner with just five minutes to go. And the Bramall Lane thought they had their party, but Rodri wasn't done yet. And he fired the ball into the top left-hand corner of the goal. First time here, it was a screamer from the edge of the penalty area. Make sure you catch that one tonight. But City at top of the table, three wins from three. Perfect start. It's finished here. Sheffield United one, Manchester City two. Well, Nicky, goodness me, that certainly uh, caught fire, didn't it, in the, in the closing minutes? Before that, I think the most interesting thing was the, the fan who managed to get his way onto the pitch and uh, hug Harland and celebrate with him. But it certainly caught fire towards the end there. Let's talk about, before anything else, that Rodri strike. Goodness me, there was no stopping that. 
Absolutely, yeah. He pulled the trigger with his left foot on the half volley. Uh, it was a bit of a bad touch from Foden, actually, that laid him in. Uh, and he unleashed a shot that, you know, no keeper in the world would have saved. He had a couple of shots earlier on. Um, there was nothing like that. But, yeah, we've seen him score some, you know, very important goals over the last couple of years. And that's another very important one. And it was a great strike uh, right into the top corner, uh, right in front of the City fans. And they... Uh, you know, it was a bit subdued from them for most of the game, but they, they really did come alive uh, after that goal, that is for sure. Uh, a couple of key, you know, turning points in the game, of course, one of which was Haaland scoring. Uh, you know, we used to seeing him celebrate, of course. Uh, this time it was more a look of relief, though. He obviously pleased to score, but a real show of relief given that he'd missed a couple of chances. Of course, he didn't convert the penalty. Um, ultimately, you know, a good finish. Great play from Grealish in the build-up as well. But he did have a look of relief, didn't he? He did, yeah. Obviously, he missed the penalty, which, you know, um, you should always... Well, he should at least hit the target, the penalty. Um, he had another great chance in the midway through the second half where Wes Fothergun made an unbelievable save. Um, and then, yeah, when he scored the header, great play from Jack Grealish down this left-hand side. Stood it up, and it's a good header at the back post. Um, and like I say, it would have been more relief than anything because on another day, Erdogan Ireland could have had three or four, but... You know, not vintage City today as the players are coming off the pitch now clapping the travelling fans. Uh, not vintage City by any stretch of the imagination, but ultimately they've got the three points at the top of the league. Um, somebody else who'll be relieved, of course, is Kyle Walker. Um, he had a huge role to play in, of course, setting up the opportunity for, for, for robbery. But prior to that, a massive part, unfortunately, in, in giving Sheffield United their opportunity. What, you, what was he thinking? Well, I'm not really sure. He, he got the ball in his possession. Uh, all right. He could have just... He didn't want to give a, a corner away. I get that. He could have just kicked it out for a throw-in. He tried to be a little bit clever. Back heel it. I think it was to Bernardo Silva, uh, which, you know, I'm not an expert, but back heeling in your own box is never um, <laughs> advisable. Um, and it got cut out and it, and it fell to Bogle, who, who ended up scoring. So, yeah, City have sort of got away with one today. And even late on, they had some chances. Diaz gave a sloppy pass away in his own box. Um, so, yeah, uh, what should have been a routine, you know, end to the game wasn't. And City were made to work for the win. Ultimately, they've got the win, which is the most important thing. But there'll be concerning things there for Pep. Um, some of the tweets that I shared with you at half-time from fans included people calling for Foden and saying we need something to happen in the middle. In the absence of De Bruyne, we need Foden. You were mentioning he's very enterprising and creative in his play. Is that something they'd been lacking and what difference did he make when he when he joined the, the play? Yeah, I mean, he wasn't on for long, but he certainly made an impact. He got, the, he got the ball in the dangerous areas, in and around the sort of, you know, the Kevin De Bruyne positions, if you like. Um, and he slipped a couple of good passes in, created a couple of things. So he looked really lively, um, although he was only on for sort of 15 minutes or so or 20 minutes, whatever it was. But he, uh, yeah, he did well. Um, I'd like to see him start the next game. Possibly will, obviously. It sounds like he's been ill overnight, so there might be a reason why he didn't start today. But he certainly looked lively when he came on and... Um, I think he'll end up getting an assist for Rodri's goal, although it was uh, a bit of a missed touch of his inside the box. And like I say, Kyle Walker, you know, he made a mistake at one end, but he made amends at the other end. Um, he squared the ball for um, for Foden, who then who then had a missed touch and, and Rodri lashed into the net. So yeah, very lucky City today to get away with all three points. Absolutely. Uh, well, Nicky Weaver, of course, former uh, City keeper, has been part of your commentary team today. Will be with us until fourth.